gonna beat out my best friend. What's up, Aaron? You hear me? Yeah, so then we running together, it's passing the baton. Yeah, that's it. That's the we on this. This relay team together don't mean we rock it. Yeah, cause uh, then uh, uh, Richardson, she lost and came in last place. The American girls is laughing at her. Of course, Jamaican girls laughing. Cause they didn't like her. No, go again. Oh, what's her name? Lost last yeah. year. You no, know, go again. Last year? Yeah, they're just laughing at her. Um, what's up, Chad? If you're ready, throw them zeros up. What? What's your number? Throw them fifty fours up. I'm pretty sure you was fifty four. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, this is Gil's arena. Fifty four. What was your number? Fifty four. <laughs> Family number, Gil. <laughs> Even being big man, this is early two. Family <laughs> number, man. I'm just telling you. That is a big number. man's That's number. Just, <laughs> yeah, I got him. Hey. That's a family number, but they know it's awful. Really? I'm just, all right. Terrible fucking number. My dad's put the eight in the league. That's a, that's a good number. 35 high school. Just, bitch, just, or, you should just put it together when we're nine. Hey, put them 50 <laughs> folds in the check. What? I don't know why. I got to ask him why he picked 54. I'm telling you, we used to judge you by your number, dog. I, I know this. You at the other end, you had an ass and I'm all. He sucked. I know this. That's so funny. Like, there's really, that's real. Ugly yeah, numbers. They don't folds in it. No, look, they do. Don't, no. <laughs> Gil ain't got no 50 folds on the wall. <laughs> God bless you, chat. Yeah, let's do it. God bless y'all. Blame Marcus Johnson for that. That was good. We had no choice. Oh, shit. I think it was 35, 35. I need to get, I need to go, I need to get the all the other jerseys out. I don't have no room for them. I want it. Craziest number I think I wore, I wore 44, like my senior year, because you know they ordered the numbers by size. Nice, yeah. So I wanted four. Welcome back to Gills Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoa, whoa! Ooh, ooh. Appreciate all the 54s that were being thrown up in support. <laughs> Blame my dad. That's not our, not my fault. I wanted, but like you said, I wanted good numbers, but I was a bigger kid. I had to go, had to go on the high. I wanted one, two, four. <laughs> a little thick too. Yeah, the so 50, you know what I'm saying? You just right. Five. You already know. Yes. They were pulling them shits. I was like, all right, that's the only one I'm gonna fit in, so I gotta rock that. <laughs> But back with the, the damn gear, what you out here? Look at you, what is this, bro? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what this is, but it's, it's cool. Show them the shoes. I like those. I don't got no socks on, but no, the, I like the fluff. The fr it's supposed to come no, with like dog them. bones, but I ain't know how to put them on. Okay. No, you shouldn't, but that's <laughs> <laughs> No, them nice, though. <laughs> like, I'll rock them. We, we got Kenya Martin back with us. Oh, what's happening? And makeup, this is your second time? Third yes. time, fourth time? Second time. Okay. I'm back. It's been a minute. <laughs> Lexi, I'm back, I'm back. Lexi Brown, back up in here. <laughs> Appreciate you coming through. Oh, thanks for Always me styling. Mm -hmm. What are those? These are Tiana Taylor's. They're Jordans. I'm a sneaker free agent, everybody. Wait, she got her own shoe? Yeah. Aren't they cute? Uh, yeah. yeah, they are. They're dope. really cute. They have little roses. It comes with yeah, this. Yeah, I was admiring them. It's nice. I'm hot. I like these. When did you, I'm not really a Jordan girl. I'm gonna get my either, daughter up here then. I love these. We know, you, we know you Reebok. No, I'm not anymore. Oh, for real? I'm nobody. Sure, that's why she got on Nike. She couldn't have yeah. that. I, 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 I know, but. She said shift. Yeah. Nope, I'm nobody. <laughs> oh, she, I hope she wouldn't be reckless like that. <laughs> Still on the cut and talking about, hey, I got one of these. Free agent. Free agent over here. I am also a shoe free agent, so, you know, anybody would like <laughs> to bless me. Y'all say I wear Chucks every day. I'm poor. <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with Chucks. I know, but they're, they're the everyday, every man, common man shoes. So, but here's what we got cracking today. You're a gangbanger. <laughs> no blue or red, girl. 
Orange, only only green, Caucasian purple, color purple. truck. <laughs> only Caucasian color, very neutral, <laughs> and black every once in a while too. But uh, Ben Simmons says he's ready to dominate this season, but will his game cast a check? His mouth is writing. Uh, Rondé Hollis Jefferson uh, has been looking like a Kobe clone. Oh, he did go to Arizona. He looked like Kobe mixed with Tupac, but not Tupac, the dude who played Tupac in the Tupac movie. <laughs> uh, been looking like a Kobe clone for Jordan in the World Cup, but does he deserve another shot in the league? And Rondo said he was focused on trying to outcoach coaches, and it also leads to another conversation. Does the player make the coach, or does the coach make the player? Before we get into all that, as always, this show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Download the app, use promo code Gills Arena. They will match your first deposit up to $100. And we got some breaking news, Gil. On Tuesday, we were at 298,000 subscribers. You know, not as good as 300, but we told everybody if we got to that 300, we'd give them a special treat. We are currently, I think, at 301,000 subscribers. We did it! Yeah. All Gil had to do was sweat his shirt out. That's all. <laughs> the tough crowd sweated, sweated out logo. I was like, logo. I don't need to wear no undershirt. I got a sweater on. <laughs> Always. Yep. But we're giving y'all a special gift uh, for week one of the NFL season. Hold on. Uh, use, use promo code Gil, and you get a free special pick em for week one of the season. 0.5 yards. Who can't do that? I could probably do that. Mm. No, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. But you can't get point five. You can't. Should you big tight end or something? Yeah, nah, yeah. Nah. Get out and post you up. <laughs> Can you catch it? I got. Yeah. yeah. Nah. <laughs> nah, I ain't go. That just sound too convincing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we gon'. And as always, we do mostly fans at the end of the show. Go ahead and drop your questions in. Include your underdog fantasy username, and you will get a fifty dollar bonus. I'm getting hit up on Twitter, uh, Gil. People are actually getting their bread, so good to see underdog okay, cool. following through with it. Very thankful for that fifty piece that they could use for pickums. Man, I don't care about if they want bread. I, I offered them 5K yesterday, and they turned that down. Turn you know what time it is? Turn it down. Yeah. So we got a good mostly fans question. We're going to start just quickly uh, for y'all, too. Uh, this comes from underdog user what a FRM870. 87-88 first team versus the 2012-2013 first team. Who wins? 87-88 uh, was Barkley Bird. Hakeem, Jordan, Magic, 2012-13 is LeBron, KD, Duncan, Kobe, CP3. Fuck, say, say this. Uh, so the, we got Magic. So the good Magic, right? Magic. Barkley, Barkley, Bird, Hakeem, Jordan, Magic for the 87-88 team. The 2012-2013 uh, team is LeBron, KD, Duncan, Kobe, CP3. Hey, them young, hey, them young dogs. They might lose. 87, 88, young dogs. I know. I'm going with I'm them. I'm going to 88. <laughs> I'm going with them. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I'm going with them. Yeah, 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 I'm going with them young dogs. <laughs> no question? Yeah, because they yeah, 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 them boy. Jordan only like, what, 26, maybe? He averaging 35, 37. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Oh, good. my God. That's reckless, Jordan, too. That's before getting his ass with by. Yeah, that's before <laughs> yeah. the pisses done got to him. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> him, yeah. That's prime magic. Ooh, Barkley. Yeah. Hakeem. Oh, yeah. I don't think it's That's close. a woof. Not close. All right. Fifty dollars nonetheless. Mm. And we got a comment. This is from Monty Thompson. He said, Gil looking like he fresh off a Diddy video. Hey, yeah, back in 90, what, six, seven, eight. <laughs> I like it though. Yeah. I like it though. And as always, if you can't watch the show live with us, go ahead and listen to it on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get your podcast from. Help us dominate both sides of the game. You see us running it up on YouTube. If we run it up on the podcast side, too, we might be able to get a bag, pay our bills. I can get some Gucci loafers instead of these chucks that I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> but let's get into it. So, Lex, we got you here on the couch. Mm. I was at the crib yesterday, minding my business, doing what I like to do, watching uh, ESPN. Came across the ticker, said it, it was announced that you'd be out for the rest of the season. Yeah. So you're having arguably one of your best seasons of your career. A lot of people saying you should have got that all-star love, but... Missed some games, and, and now, you know, we're not trying to be all up in your business, but want to know how are you doing physically, emotionally, and mentally? Um, physically, I'm doing better um, every day. It's like a day-to-day -day thing, so I'll have a really good day, and then I might have a really horrible day the next day, but um, I'm getting there. Mentally, it's been a struggle. Uh, I just love being in the gym. I love the game, so I have kind of, I've been completely shut down from all physical activity pretty much for the, most of the summer, so that's just kind of been a little bit hard to deal with, but... The team has been great. My family's been great. Um, they've allowed me to like handle this privately. The team has handled this really privately, which I really appreciate. 
Um, and they just want me to be focused and healthy for next season. And I, I've never had that in my career. Someone being like, we locked in for next year. Like, so I'm just really looking forward to getting back on the court. So how hard is it for you, though, to, to watch this Spark squad and know you're not out there helping them? It's so hard. And, you know, we've, we've dealt with any possible thing that you could have dealt with from a health standpoint on our team, we've dealt with. One of our teammates, she tested positive for COVID yesterday. We have injuries. We had a flu bug that, like, annihilated the team at the beginning of the season. Like, we've just been dealing with a lot. So just seeing them, you know, battle through all that, still being playoff contention um, has been amazing. And I just want to shout out my girl, Jordan Canada. And, you know, she's had a breakout Go Bruins! Uh, Jordan Canada for most improved. And if they don't give it to her, they, they're hating. Um, she's just made such a leap from last season to this season. So I'm just really proud of her and I'm really excited for her to be my point guard for the future. I've seen her make a leap too on social media. She, you know, she coming oh, she's out there, talking, you know, her shit. talking her shit. Yeah, she doing what that. she needs to do. So, yeah. you know, that's what we do. That's the Bruin way. But let's talk a little bit just about what's going on this season. You got, you know, a couple super teams in the Aces and the Liberty. Uh, Aces set the record for most wins by a team in the season with 30. Uh, I think they did in their 34th game. The Mercury previously had that record of 29, only played 34 games in the season. Now it's 40. But yeah, we talk about Aces and Liberty. Uh, I think the Liberty are three and two against the Aces this season. Mm -hmm. There's been some talk about this Aces squad being, you know, arguably one of the greatest of all time. If they win the championship this season, will they be the best team in WNBA history? No. <laughs> <laughs> and they're really good, trust me, but they're not, I don't think they're, they'll be the best team. I think they have some really great pieces. But if you look back at the, the Minnesota Lynx dynasty that they had with Maya and Simone Augustus and all them, like, they're not touching that team right now from like a position standpoint, from what they had going on on the bench. Um, and they won four championships. So Vegas has won one. Um, you know, I think when they, if they do win this season, you know, they can be sprinkled into that conversation. They could they they pull up. Um, I think what the Liberty have shown is like there is a glaring piece of that team missing. And I think that's where Candace Parker was at. Um, I don't know if she's coming back this season, but I don't think they were going to, they thought they were going to miss her as much as they do. I know I didn't think that they were going to miss her as much as they do, but they're definitely the most talented team. Well, they have the most talented starting five, um, but they're not um, unbeatable clearly. And the Liberty just had their number this year and you know, they're, they're clicking, they're going the right direction and, you know, they're just taking off. You know, that happens. Some teams go like this when playoffs come, and then some people start going like this when playoffs come. But I think it's going to be Vegas and the Liberty in the finals. I do okay. still think that. <laughs> We're looking forward to it. So we got one of the best WNBA draft classes coming up, in a lot of people's opinion. You got Angel Reese, Paige Beckers, Kaylin Clark, Cameron Brink coming. Whose game? What? What did you just say? What did I just say? You said, wait, some of them, will you say them names again? So you got Angel Reeves? Be, she, she can't come into the draft this year. Next year. This After coming year. She's going to only be a what? A no, junior. she's a senior right now. I thought Angel Reeves was a junior. Yeah. Senior. Okay, who else? Paige. She's only a sophomore this year. Senior. Paige Buckner? Beckers. Beckers. Becker, from <laughs> UConn? Yeah. And, what? Technically, she's a senior, but she got hurt. So she missed the year. So she's but she's done the four, right? This will be the. I think this will be her. She third. wasn't just in she high school. Twenty twenty one. Time is flying. Time dude. is really flying. She missed the year. Twenty twenty one. What? Yeah. Okay. Okay. If she wants to declare because of her age, she can. I'm pretty yeah. sure, but. She doesn't have to. So it's like, so it's like football. That's actually kind of like a lot of them right now too. Yeah, Kaylin Clark. Kaylin Clark you could be a certain age. And no, no, no. Win. Hold on, hold on. Last year, Kaylin Clark was a junior. junior, and Reese was a sophomore. No, she's a junior. Okay, I'm tripping. No, they kind of like rolled with that, but she played two full seasons at Maryland before she. Changed it was that whole COVID shit, though, right? You got oh, the that's what's fucking. That, okay. yeah. that COVID year is fucking up everything. She played two whole everything. years at Maryland before okay. she transferred. Because you got Let's college see. football players like 24, 25 right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like grown yeah, ass yeah, yeah. men, kids and shit at the game, <laughs> like kids on the team. Oh, yeah, because oh, that's what it was. Everyone got that COVID <laughs> that extra year. year. I they think this is COVID the last year. year of that. So you can use it or not use it. Right. Yeah, West Virginia, 26. Bam. 
That's insane. <laughs> you play West Virginia too. I mean, you talk about sports, but like just being on a college campus, like at that age, you like, on, what are you doing? You're a pedophile, man. You can't talk to nobody. Like, like there's no way you're having fun on like, a college campus. You're a pedophile you're on, cam- on a college campus, uh-huh. man. Like, what are you doing? You can't doing? talk to nobody on a college campus. They'll lock you up. <laughs> Straight to the gym. Yeah, you. Off campus housing, right. to the gym. Right. You might as well go be not, a pro at that point. Not point. at the front like, gym. Like, What are you trying to accomplish? At least for men. Uh-huh. Like, Yo, just go. Unless they paying for your, unless you're trying to be a, this certain type of lawyer or doctor and mm-hmm. they just continue funding your education that you just using them, I get it. But, dude, you, it's time to go, bruh. Yeah. So, of that crew, though, who do you think's game best translates to the WNBA? Um, probably Caitlin's, Caitlin Clark's, for sure. Just from an IQ level, too. Like, she's, I just love the way she thinks the game and she makes the pass to the next pass. I mean, usually she's making the pass. But um, I think it's going to be interesting watching her this season, though, because... She did lose some teammates, so I don't think Iowa as a whole is going to be as talented as they were last season. So I'm like really interested to see how she like steps up. I don't know how much more she can step it up, but okay. I'm like really looking forward to it for sure. And then yesterday we talked about. Yeah. Go ahead, Gil. No, I'm just. He's still confused. I'm still confused. He's still confused about the years. It's, no, because that's. I mean, we're we have discussions, um, you know, with our team like about the draft, but like no, we don't know who's coming out and who's going to stay. So. You know, tank. You don't tank, but like you look at like the Phoenix Mercury right now. Like, mm-hmm. They kind of. Did you see the possession of the, one of their last games? Was it Phoenix? No, it was Seattle. When they just stopped them in Chicago. Did mm-hmm. you see when they just stopped playing? Mm-hmm. I've never seen them. They like, they were down five. There was twelve seconds left, and both teams just stopped playing. And Seattle had a the ball. They were down. Mm-hmm. So I've never seen that before. But I'm like, how can you make a decision for the draft when we don't even know if the so girls who, are coming out yet? So who can actually stay in? The, all of them. So all, okay, okay, okay. I knew I was on, yeah. I knew yeah, 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 I wasn't no, tripping. You're not. They okay. all can stay in. They all can stay in, okay. That Rona year, girl. Yeah. That yeah. Rona red shirt. Yeah. The, the Rona not red shirt. Com- well, then they're not coming into the draft then. I they wouldn't. Some have the potential to. No, 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 no. Yeah, I wouldn't. They make too much money in college. Some of them. Four. Some, some like, of them. No, those the ones we just named them. Yes. Those three, Caitlin, Angel, Who's the other one? Cameron? Okay. I wouldn't be shocked. If Paige. Paige. I Paige, would be shocked it. if they stayed for money. But like, you, you think they'll go to the league? This year? No. I don't... At the end of the... Yeah. At the oh, when they're done? I mean, yeah. Where else would they go? Stay in college? You can't stay in college forever. <laughs> for that bag. They got there one more year. I would take it. I was take the, and stay in college oh, for yeah, one more year. Sure. Okay, yeah. Take yeah. the bet. Take that. Take that money, power. Right. Yeah, right. What? That's, I mean, they're making like what? They gonna make more? Wait, one, one was making what? Four hundred, five hundred thousand? Yeah. Bags. Crazy. Angel Reese can't even go to class anymore. She's too Man, famous. Shit, that's crazy. Paige Buckner bought bought Man. her whole team Rolexes. <laughs> hey, I, 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 I wasn't was famous team. and I wasn't going to class <laughs> either. Like, I couldn't do it either. He was in the league, wasn't doing that. Oh well, yeah. I mean, but people are weird now. Rolexes. Like the world is different now, so I kind of get it. But I'm like, I went to Duke. I was. I was in class? class with all them, all really? the guys. Yes. Nah. I had class with all them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people don't, people are just weird now. And at Duke also is a smaller university and people have sense. They went to class. No, no, no. They were in, yeah, yeah, they was in class. Just, no, they was in class. No, I know they went, I know they went to class because they wasn't that good as pros, so they had to get that degree. <laughs> <laughs> Back, when'd, you come, when'd you come out? Like 2000 what? 18. Ooh. Well, that's like with Zion then, right? That was right before they got there. Okay. So like, I probably left college like right before like the world got like super weird. Okay. You was in super weird. Yeah. Marvin. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Marvin Bagley. That was great. Marvin was there my last year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was the last group, yeah. I think. Okay. Yeah. So we talked about this yesterday from an NBA perspective, but it's different on the W side because a lot of players go overseas and play with a lot of those teams internationally. But can the WNBA champion call themselves the world champion? Oh, gosh. I mean, we do, but we don't, like, walk around saying, we're the world champs. You say, we're the WNBA champion. So I don't think, like, the debate that's going on is, like, so strange to me because you don't, we don't walk around saying we're world champs. Like, we still say, like, we're WNBA champs, we're NBA champs. Like, if they took the world championship banner down and put up just NBA, like, I don't think anybody would be upset about that. Like, I don't know. But I think, yeah, I think Vegas has the best team in the world. But the overseas teams, I mean, they're solid, too. But they also take, have WNBA the, players. Yeah, yeah, that's if you take well, the WNBA the, players yeah, off. <laughs> I'm trying to think. The EuroLeague team that just won, I think their whole starting five was WNBA, WNBA players. players. 
But is that your league team saying no? <laughs> Y'all host already five is your league player. Who gets the bigger bag? No, I'm still going with the like the WNBA. Okay, well then sure. the WNBA. So you would say what well, so this year was so what well, last year, right? Yeah, last year's Vegas team versus the Euro team. Without the WNBA players? No, with the WNBA. With the WNBA players. Mm, I mean, then it's two WNBA teams played. It doesn't. It's different. If you think about it. Yeah, it's because, different. Because and it is crazy. Like that. That year, I, I can't remember what team it was. Was it Gala or Fenner? I can't remember. One of those teams. They obviously had enough money to pay all five of them to be on that team together. Like you, mm-hmm. they, we can't do that here. I mean, the Aces have built their team through draft picks and stuff. Which is I mean, y'all can, but oh, yeah. so so the Euro team that they probably could beat. A WNBA team. If they kept their W players, mm-hmm. oh, for sure, because they are a WNBA team. Like I think. Yeah, they're made up of yeah. WNBA players. And then a lot of them are like they have passports. They're foreign born, some so they can just put them all on the same team. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So yeah. it would well, be that, us. Yeah, that won't happen in the NBA. I can tell you that for sure. No. <laughs> no, no, no. It wouldn't. <laughs> I mean, but listen, everyone was trying yesterday, right? Like, no. I, it's just such a weird, it's a weird, it's, it's, it's a, a weird, weird thing that he started. That no, I mean, he, he was, he's, I mean, from the technical yeah, he's not terms, wrong. he's not wrong. But, but why? When you think about it, like, we've done already established that these are the best teams. Like, when you say Denver Nuggets, so when is the NBA, when is the last game? July? The NBA? June. June. Yeah, mid-June. So mid-June. Mid-June. So mid-June, so three days, and then you play whoever won a Euro Cup, right? Well, I mean, unfortunately, that team actually doesn't have any NBA players on it, right? It's going to be European players. If there is an NBA player, he's been retired from the NBA, and he went back to play or, for or a local team. Or he's played over there his whole career. Yeah. I'm saying something. You know, so he's going to be, so, our, like, our NBA player that's over there, the motherfucker's 38. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's, it's an AAU team. Right, you know, um, you get beat by 100. Like people don't realize, when uh, when we sign a Euro player, he does not actually go back to that that team anymore. Right. He don't go back in the summer and play that. The only time he goes is play for his country. Yeah. Right. So when we play the best team in Spain, it's not gonna have the souls. Uh, fucking Rubio, and it's not gonna have them. <laughs> it's gonna have Juan Vorera, right? And then, and who's, <laughs> then, whose rules are you playing by? It don't matter so, who rules. It's, I'm saying, but, but you, but it's Julio go, Romando. But, in but, but just imagine, like you go to NBA guys, and you got all these athletic dudes and all Julio this shit, Romando the on the rim. Just, yeah. just knocking, that, just constantly <laughs> knocking the ball off the rim, like. <laughs> fucking scoring 75 points. Like, come on, man. Stop, y'all. Julio Romando. Julio Romando was the, the start. <laughs> Julio Romando. Okay, uh, like Luca. Luca was the best player on his team at 16, right? That's crazy. When he won a championship, if he had to play against the NBA team, he's the best player at 16. He's playing against Kevin Durant and Steph Curry's Golden State team. The fuck, guy? Come on, lose by a thousand. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> what are we talking about here? Most points ever scored in a basketball game. Because <laughs> AA, that's literally AAUC, <laughs> man. Running clock, the whole second half. Let that that's, that's run. Wouldn't have been fair. Refs would be just be like, just keep it going. That shouldn't yeah. have been fair. So let's talk a little bit about Ben Simmons, three-time All-Star, two-time All-Defense, one one All-NBA selection, but the past few seasons have been disappointing to say the least. Uh, Simmons was the subject of ridicule for his performance in the 2021 playoffs. Mixed the next season with a back injury and holdout with the Sixers before getting traded to the Nets. Uh, last season, only played about half the season before more back problems. But Simmons thinks it's just a minor setback for a major comeback. He did an interview with Mark J. Spears and Anscape and said he's getting ready to get his NBA career back on track, saying the following, for me to come back and dominate, people will be great. I don't intend to come back the same player I was last season because that's not even close to where I am. I get excited because I'm like, damn, I would expletive on that player I was last year. I don't know if he was shit on or what the expletive was. Shit. Shit. <laughs> shit. Sounds about right. Poop, whatever. <laughs> but I know where I was at last year, so it's easy to say that. But it's just fun to go and do the thing you love when you're out there. That's really it for me. I don't really ask for too much. So let's talk about it, Gil. You've had some opinions about Ben Simmons. I feel like we've talked about this shit literally our entire duration working together, but... What does Ben Simmons need to do to get back to an all-star level? Just play. The, the question... <laughs> sure. Literally get the, on the court. The, the question is this. He received his money, right? He yes. won. He won that... Uh, 
He get all that the credit. Yeah, yeah. So he won that lawsuit against against Philly. So he's back. He's back 100. Whole. Yeah, the whole, whole. back. It's good. Everything's whole. As <laughs> soon as he got that check. Oh, shit, 100. Because <laughs> we didn't consider that as an option, right? If he, they're finding him, he says he has a back injury, right? He gets traded to Nets. If he play, they're holding his money. If he plays, then his back doesn't hurt. Mm-hmm. So he forfeits the 19, 20 something million. So he has to play the the, 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 the long game. game. You gotta play the game. Oh, yeah, oh, I must have to say. He has to play the long the case game. Over. Yeah, case over. Yeah, case over is shit. This thing loose. <laughs> <laughs> I can get into a defensive squad again. <laughs> So you said it's been disappointing. Like, no, it's been non-existent the last couple yeah, of years. Yeah, non-existent. And to Gil's point, like, no, you just got to get on the floor, man. Like, when he's on the floor, he can help any team because he's got a certain skill set that you can't teach. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, he defend, he pass the ball well, he fast, athletic. Like, all that stuff translate. Like, damn if you're not the best shooter. Like, mm-hmm. just get in the gym, try. Like, if you listen, get in the gym, shoot the bitch, and if you get in the game, shoot the bitch. If you miss it, you fucking miss it. Just, hey, get back, get a stop. Like, you, you oh ever, well, man. You ever seen him work out? Not in person, but I've seen. I've seen him work out probably 10, 12 times. Uh-huh. And I'm trying to figure out, yo, why you don't shoot? Like, when he's shooting three, perfect form, everything. Right? And I'm sitting here like. Yeah, it's weird. This is really like, don't shoot. I'm confident. It might be per- perception. Yeah. When he gets on an NBA court, the court is bigger than that practice court, right? You can see the wall. You can see yeah. how far it is. I think when he gets into the NBA game and it's his so, depth perception, his is, depth perception is. I think it's. Well, how much does that depth perception mess with you? Obviously, the bigger the arena, the harder it is. But there's. I mean, listen. If you go to a practice. And you go around every single practice, there's a Michael Jordan. <laughs> there's a Kobe Bryant in practice. Yeah, there's, there's that guy in practice. He just can't turn it on in a game. Something happens when them lights come on. And popcorn. I mean, it's, pop- yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's different. The environment's different. The lights are brighter. There's people around. Like, Some people get anxiety. Yeah, get anxiety. anxiety. Like, it's, it's all kind of stuff. But you it looks know. like Ben's kind of conquered this mental block that he had or he claimed that he had. And I think that's good. Like, he doesn't really do interviews. He hasn't mm-hmm. really done any interviews for him to come out and say that about himself, like that's a that's a good sign, that's exciting. Like he's like not been on the court, he's been radio silent, like interview wise on his socials, he don't really be doing anything. So I'm happy for him because I know that like that mental that me- mental part of the game and sports is always missed. Like it's so important. So for him to be able to yeah, conquer right. that, that like took a lot of work. So I hope that he can play a whole season. Yeah, cause people question if he liked the game or not. Yeah, and that's what it became. Like he people talked about that as well. Question if he wanted to play. Like yeah, we all did. You know what I'm saying? Like you got all these athletic attributes and people see it and like yeah. So it's especially guys that's play. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's hard for us to sit back and be like, like like you don't want to play. Like are you hurt for real? Or you just don't like the game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like but. If he is hurt, he hurt. You know what I mean? He's like, that 20, mil- now, that 20 million I'm trying to get since my back hurt. My, since my back is awful. I got hit by a truck. That makes sense. I don't blame him. I got, I got hit by a truck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure all of y'all have seen or, or had teammates that just didn't love the game for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Like, how hard is that for you as a teammate to see that and, and be in a locker room with that person supposed to go out to battle with them? It doesn't, I mean, it hurts. It hurts, but you've already came to that conclusion. Right, that I'm just not going. We just don't fuck with him. Right, it's just <laughs> hey, what hurts is when the you know the news, right, and TNT, and they say, oh, he don't want to pass the ball. <laughs> you want to pass the ball to him? <laughs> work with him, huh? <laughs> work with that dude, huh? <laughs> right, like they if don't you work see. With him, you'll see it. They don't. Yeah, they're not with them every day. Like that's that's the funniest thing. It's like y'all don't know what goes on in practice or the locker room, or the things that come out of this person's mouth, like, and you want us to just feed this person that we all know hates being here and doesn't want to be here and doesn't want to put everything out there for them. And it's, like, frustrating, but, like, you can't get into a back and forth with the media. Like, Mm -hmm. it's pointless. You'll lose every time. Every time. But how frustrating is that to see the the media perception of whatever this player is versus the reality? Media fans, like, you, you... just like anything in life, right? If someone is averaging 36, 37 in a team sport, don't say ball hog. Ask why. <laughs> why? There must be a reason that he's 
averaging this much with a team because it's already been established that this is not <laughs> just give me the ball, you know? Right? Just give me the ball, get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> We've already done established this shit already. <laughs> Motherfuckers, you uh, on a fast break layup. Here, there you go. <laughs> yeah, because there are times like the ball, like you have to receive the ball. Yeah. Like you don't have the ball every single time. So it's funny. And then there's moments like if they score under 35, that means one game they're scoring like 60 mm-hmm. or 50. Like just dumb. Like just think. <laughs> just just think, use just your think, brain. Just, just use your brain, please. And as players, how do you deal with confidence issues and keeping your mental right? It's a long season, a long career. I'm sure there's a lot of peaks and valleys. So how do you handle that mental side of the game? My confidence ain't never wavered, so I don't... <laughs> I, that's not I once, mean, not I never, never fucking understood that. Yeah. Like, I've never understood that, bro. Like, I can miss... I can go... Hey, man, listen, I wasn't the best free throw shooter at all this and jump shooting at times, bro. Don't... My confidence ain't gonna waver at all. Like, I'm going out there to hoop. It ain't doing that. I'm gonna go do this. This ain't... I'm gonna go... I am not... It doesn't, it never registered with me. So I don't, that. Yeah, I'm not fortunate I can say that. I thought I was, a, I was the cockiest motherfucker ever. <laughs> when I got back on the court after the gun situation, it has nothing to do with this. Thinking what people's thinking had me thinking, mm-hmm. right, for the first time. And from there, it's like, I'm at the free throw line. What are they talking about? Like, it just, all of a sudden, I know, all of a sudden, I let the world inside. When, when before, I'd never seen a fan in the ring. I, I can say I'd never actually seen fans. Like, my, I'm tunnel vision. Like, I can only see the court. Didn't see who's in the stand. Kids waving to me. I'm looking past. They're like, ah, oh, see you little motherfuckers, right? When, <laughs> When I got back from, when I got back, I can see everyone. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's a lot of people in here. Yeah. Right? It's just, right? What are they saying? What are they whispering? What are they doing this? And it, I started shooting. Free throws was horrible. Taking, I'm taking two, three hundred a day. I'm shooting 60%. Whoa. Shooting. Now I don't want to shoot no more. I don't want to miss. I don't want them to say something. I they boo the gun thing. The boo, I mm. lost it. Yeah. Damn. Fucking lost it. Wow. Never gained it. Listen, I never gained it back. I retired, didn't even want to watch basketball no more until like 2016, 17. Damn. Damn. Fucking just the gun thing, dog. Not 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 bad. And usually it doesn't have a lot to do with basketball. Even for me, I didn't start overthinking as much until I became a pro, where. This is the first time I'm not playing really at all. So like the few minutes I do get, you're like, I can't mess up. Mm -hmm. Like I've never, I had never been in a situation like that before. And then I had a coach that kind of, kind of tried to tag this uncoachable trait on me. Like, oh, she got a bad attitude. Her body language sucks. So like, then I was like, okay, if I miss this shot and I don't react exactly how they want me to react, now everyone's still gonna think that I have body language problems. I'm a bad teammate. I'm not a good person. And like that's kind of what got me um, the beginning of my career. Like now, I'm you know I've matured through that. I actually did work on that because I am really hard on myself. But in college, like I never thought about anything. One, because I was in the gym all the time. Like we had 24/7 act. I was just always in the gym, and I'm always feel best about my game when I'm working on my craft mm-hmm. constantly, constantly, constantly. And when you get in the W, you don't have 24/7 access to your practice facility, and um, some teams do. Not, not our team. So it's like little things like that I had to start to adjust because I know how I am. Like I need to be in the gym all the time to feel my best. And that's why I started my season so well because I found a place to be able to go to the gym all the time and work out. Um, so like now at my career, like I don't care as much as I used to and it's great, but it took a lot of work. And like just back, going back with, with the Ben Simmons thing, like I think he had to work on that. And I guess we're just going to see if it, if it, if it happened. I know, bro. When I was in Orlando, bro, every morning I threw up. Listen, it was so bad, bro. It was so bad. I tinted car limo tint. I limo tinted <coughs> house windows. That's so insane. people didn't know I lived there. So I go from the car right into the garage, boom. So no one actually seen. Like I was self conscious for the first time in my first time in my life. Like that's Damn. the guy with the guns. That's the guy with the gun. That I that shit was fucking with me. I guess I ain't never gave a fuck what people think that much. I, 
Like I, nobody, like I, 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 really, I didn't. Like too. I really did. Like I, I, I'm, I really didn't. Like I had some horrible times in Denver where I'm shooting air balls and shit. Like just because I wasn't working on my shit the way I should have been. But I didn't. Motherfucker come to me, at me, me the man. I tell him, I, I don't read what you write. I don't care what you got to say. I, man, listen. Meet me in the parking lot. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I man, meet me in the parking lot. Like, but, but I, I just. I pull guns on teammates as a rookie, right? I, I, none of that shit. I didn't give a fuck about none of that. That's what I said. It's like something damn. that it just, it, just, uh, it just came out of nowhere. Uh, damn. Just woke up one day, um, like even when, like after, after, when I got in trouble and I'm in the halfway house, I'm cocky in the halfway house, right? <laughs> Go to Chicago, I'm, shh, yo, y'all horrible. That season start, the questions they's asking, all of this, and right, going into the game and second guessing, like what? Got to Orlando, then I gotta, like, I gotta, I can't be who I am anymore because of the gun thing, so they're already prejudging me. Then the baby mama done said I done left her and the kids for homeless and the snow and shit like that. Right, so all that's all that's could God, I got man. served on the court. I remember what? that. So I got yeah, come halftime on TV. Got a package. That. Oh hey, thank I, you. You've been that. served like so that's at, insane. At halftime, yeah, I'm not I, even before the game. Half, halftime. How are you getting? You, had, you have, have to buy a ticket to get in to do that. Yeah, that. I'm I'm walking down the same <laughs> tunnel like hey hey oh, yeah boom. You've been served. Wow. So, so so you can see how just everything's compiling. I didn't. Yeah, I would have went to jail at halftime. I would have fucking grabbed, I would have grabbed the silver servant and I would have went to jail because he was just doing his job. I would have grabbed, motherfucker, you show up right here yeah. while I'm trying to <laughs> the guy to this. Yeah. Why can't you slagging the fan around? His motherfucker ain't no fan. Yeah. But that's why I didn't go to, uh, I tried out for the Lakers. So I tried out for the Lakers after the lockout. Tried out for the Lakers. We're in uh, Steven Jackson's, uh, not the NBA player, the rich one. Yeah. The rich. Uh, not the rich one, but the, the, the billionaire. They both dude. rich, but the, rich, that's the richer of the two. Dude. I uh, live in Beverly Hills, so I'm with Mitch, with Mitch Kupchak and all them, right? If I took, if I took 300 shots, I might have missed 10. And I had to, I wanted to prove what my distance looked. So I'm shooting right in front of the half court. I went 18 from 20, right? So I'm on. <laughs> the interview starts. Like you were talking after, like how long you? And I talked myself out of this job. He, he said, "Yeah, so uh, uh, can you can you come here now?" And all of all I thought was, "L.A. media, the gun stuff, like oh, oh hell no, oh nah, they're not just going every day write Gilbert Arenas to do with the guns in the locker room. They're not going to write that, not in L.A. No, no, no." So I'm like, "Oh yeah, you know, it's going to take me about a uh, like I'm here to run the line drills. They already know I'm in shape. Yeah, it's going to take me about a uh, two, two months to get in game shape because it's March and you're making season over, <laughs> right? So I'm sitting here talking myself out of the L.A. job." Because I was scared of the media. And am I the same person Kobe thinks he's getting? Ah, I don't want to deal with that. I go to Memphis. Left there, said, I don't think I'm ready, ready to play this year. Go back home, go try out for Memphis. Try to talk myself out of that job. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, my son's birthday. I want to go back home. It's like, no, no, no. We got a check right here for you. <laughs> like, wow. Self-sabotage. I felt like I'm... Jesus Christ. Trust man. me, it, it took about 2000... 2016, man. That's crazy. But do you, looking back, think that's the bad? Because to your point, coming to the Lakers and what that media spotlight would have been on. With me? Versus going to the Grizzlies where you got to deal with less of that shit. That, that's what I said. Mentally, mentally bro, I, I, trust me, I was not I was not him. Damn. Yeah, I was Cabbage Patch Kid. I was soft. Charmin soft. So I'm sure, <laughs> I mean, I'll be, I know, right? <laughs> You looking at Gil different now? No, 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 I'm okay. just, no, 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 not at all. No, he's still an assassin when he, but I'm just trying to figure, like, you didn't tell no, like, you ain't trying to, like, talk, you just dealt uh, with it. You just dealt like, It was like the first time I felt like you're looking at me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, all my moves, I don't know. It's like the, I, I made a comment about Tiger Woods once, mm -hmm. right? Um, it was, it was uh, the year when all the stuff happened, which I'm the one who took him out of the media uh, with my gun stuff. That took the women away. <laughs> um, and he's playing. And I said, he's not going to win because when he's sitting there, 
when it's quiet, he's for the first time listening. So that 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 drama that's around him, oh. his Superman cloak is gone. Mm-hmm. The confidence is gone because everybody has something on him now. Right. So I said he's not gonna win anymore until he until he gets back his super cloak and he realized he's the shit. And that's when he started losing, 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 then eventually he's back. Yeah. That golf shit is different too, because they were right up on you. And they were literally and following you. You're supposed Just to be quiet. You. And be yeah. quiet, but so, but, you know, so now you <laughs> you listening. Now it's like, yeah. What are they saying? Yeah, what are they saying? Yeah. And now you ain't concentrating on what you can you're say supposed what? to concentrate on. <laughs> Damn. Because they can get close, though. And even if they're not they talking, really you hear that breathing, that staring, and they will literally follow you from hole to hole to hole. Like, that shit is wild. And then yeah. while you walk into the hole, they're they saying, Lord knows what. Now you're really listening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Between the shots. You get to the next shot, like these motherfuckers just said. Da, 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 da. Now you get to the next hole, and this, now this. Oh wow! Now, bro, that's what I said. I, I went from like yeah. two thirty four to like two oh six. I'm throwing up every day. As soon as I got to the ring, blah, I'm just. Shit. <laughs> don't know. I don't know what was going on, man. I was done. I couldn't. That lockout. <laughs> Lock me out. <laughs> See, this crib. I didn't go nowhere in Orlando. Ask the teammates. You know how they, at the end of the game, they go up to the club? Up? No. There's no. people up there. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, ain't no people in my house. You going straight? Yeah, that's crazy, bro. Sorry you had to go through that, my nigga. It happens, man. Yeah, because I would follow the so side. Yeah, because, like, I'm the type of teammate, like, if I see something, like, I'm... Like, I'm Everything good. Yeah, your teammates reach out. Did like, they like, nah, they didn't know. You know, I'm gonna come in I'm with a smile some. and stuff, yeah, and you know, but you, you know, because but they don't know me, yeah. so they don't know my natural personality. It's just the person right. I get there. Yeah, like Stan Van Gundy talking this shit. I'm just sitting in here. No, damn woman, if you don't sit your motherfucking ass down, <laughs> man, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, mm. dog. That's man. Yeah. Last question for y'all. So if you were coaching Ben Simmons, how would you utilize him to get the most out of his game? I, I personally would tell him, keep driving until someone actually stops you. Until someone makes you change directions. I need your foot in the paint on every fast break. You taking the ball to the paint every... Like you're, 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 come on, you're 6'11", athletic. We don't even know if you're right-handed or left-handed. Most likely you're right-handed, but play basketball left-handed. Um, you can pass, right? So it's like, yo, know, just Get in the paint. let someone stop you. Get in, I need your two feet in the paint. And then from there, if he's going to the paint every single time, then he's gonna realize how close he is. Give me 30. Give me 30. Go go watch number 34 for the Bucks play. Go watch him play. I need you to do that. <laughs> do the same thing. Do, do that. <laughs> do that. Well, yeah. Nobody else say the mo- do hit do that. What is the, what is the difference? Nothing. But sub, Giannis' confidence ain't never wavered. He motherfucker mm-hmm. like, fuck, I'm going to shoot this bitch. Every he time. can shoot an air ball three and come down the very next possession. <laughs> pull, pull up, up three. Like, that shit never, <laughs> never happened, happened, dog. Like that. <laughs> and go to the, and keep going to the line. He didn't miss 12 <laughs> free throws. He did the same And long drive the very three. next possession <laughs> and get fouled. Yeah. Who? Come on, man. I'm serious. Ben, him, watch. Yeah, <laughs> well, what you need from me, coach? Him. Him? Yep. Right? Don't get do nothing. Name. Him. Yeah. Come on, man. So we've been since it's rookie season, uh, 2017-18, only Westbrook, Joker, Luka, LeBron, and Harden have more triple doubles. Now, I'm, listen, what he does on the floor is never going to... I think sometimes when we see a player, right, we, we try to maximize what their capabilities are, right? Like, okay, you can be, you can average 30, you can average, he's, he can actually average a triple double. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Um, all he has to be is actually aggressive. Yeah. It, the more aggressive he is, the easier the assist becomes. So we, we try to put these tags on him, 25, 30, yeah. 12, and 10. And he's one of the guys who just, I just want to play. Like, but my thing is like, yo, you're doing us a disjustice if you're not playing yeah. the game you're not being aggressive. to a certain level. Yeah. If you're not being aggressive. Like defensively, I I know he's gonna take the challenge. Absolutely. That's not we're not questioning his defense. We're questioning, yeah. Are you gonna just tap into who you really are? Yeah, and we, he's shown the world and the league what he can do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like he ain't no slouch by any stretch of imagination. What people might try to portray it as, but nah, he just got to be on the floor, man. Be available. Fuck the naysayers, man. Go out and hoop. Like, go out and hoop, man. Like, if you love the game of basketball like you claiming now, you're going to 
you're going to bust people's ass and you're going to show, well, show me because I, I, I like what you was doing. Mm -hmm. Like, I like your skill set. I like your makeup. Like, damn if people say you can't, you're not shoot the ball that well. Like, ain't the only aspect of the game, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. I think people want him to do well, too. People like watching him play. I don't, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like there, there's still a crew of people that are rolling with him. Yeah. But just, just these past couple seasons, what's happened, a lot of people have probably turned their back right. on him. Mm -hmm. I mean, the boy can average 10, 11, 12 points, man, and, and be dominant. And, like, and then shut and, down. <laughs> and be dominant because he can average the same amount of rebounds, the same amount of points, and be that monster on defense mm -hmm. and dominate the game. So what will we have to do for like people to think he's back? Does he have to like average? Like, what if he like averages crazy numbers, but they don't win? What if he comes back? He, back. he does. <laughs> but what if he's still playing well, but he's not like averaging these monstrous numbers, but they're winning? Like, where do you think? Like, what do you think they're gonna put the more value? Like, he's not playing bad in either it's situation. On the floor is what? Even what's so funny is even if because all the shit that went against him, right? Mm. His team was number one. All defensive team, right? So, so his team was number one, and he was all team defense. And when you look at that, that he didn't play well offensively, nor did Trey Young because that's who he was guarding, right? Nobody took in what he was doing defensively on the other team. Yeah, he wasn't shooting the ball, but he's like, I, I, he ain't gonna score either. Then, fuck it. Right. If I ain't gonna score, he ain't gonna score. He was doing his job, but. Number one, it's one of those things is he's going, it's, this one is just personally for him. We're going to judge him off what he's doing personally. Fuck the team success. Mm -hmm. yeah. right, he go out there and average 25 because that's going to be a career high for him. He go out there and average anywhere from what is it, 18 up, seven rebounds, seven assists. Oh, Ben's back. Yeah, I agree. I'm, mm -hmm. I agree, yeah. Now, got, yeah. His scoring numbers is low enough for him to go above him for people like, oh, yeah, he good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he go, and he on a team that really, really can't say shit. Uh, not at all. So, no. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no KD. There ain't no KD. It's you. Right, it's you. It's, it's you, sir. Know. That's real. I was keep this thing moving. So, talk a little bit about this World Cup. Team USA has been out there cooking in the Philippines. But we also got to show some love to Rondé Hollis-Jefferson who's become one of the biggest stories of the World Cup. Former NBA first-round pick, is now a naturalized citizen for Jordan, but his game has been drawing comparisons to Kobe. Uh, he's been cooking in the group stage. His team is ass, though. I watched the game last night. It was and bad? It, he, he dropped 20. He fucked his ankle up in the first half, but he had like 16 in the first half. Damn. The second half, he only had four points, but like his team, like you can see blatantly not giving him the rock. Like I don't know. Mm -hmm. What the dynamic is, but it was like, you know, just taking terrible shots, brick and shit. You, you say you don't know what the dynamic is? Well, I was about to say, what the hell you mean? I'm just saying, playing in Jordan with that squad, they looking at him like, yo, we're not really rocking with you. They looking at no him shit. like, who are you? Who are you, right? You're not, you're not <laughs> from you here. here. <laughs> Whatever. You're not from here. Never you seen don't even you one go day. here. You are ringer, dog. You is our you ringer. You don't even go here. <laughs> you getting all this attention. You are ring. You dropped 39. He ain't never been to Jordan. <laughs> But if I'm him, I'm looking at y'all like, he look, met them at the World Cup. none of y'all will ever play in the league. Huh? So let me live through y'all, all right? Now you can say you played with me. You go up, you go up to UCLA practice, walk <laughs> over, like, put me in coach. <laughs> oh, come on, yeah, that's exactly, that, that's what makes it all funny, put man. Put me in, man. But he had 39 overtime loss in New Zealand. Like I said, he, he dropped the 20-piece on Team USA. He was, he was going 105 <laughs> out there for the most part, but fucked his ankle up. <laughs> It's your well, smoke, you don't got to no, no. just, just interrupt. When was, when was the last time he was in the league? Let me pull it up. No, oh, man. <laughs> Some years. Put me in, coach. Some years, right? Some years, right? Some years. <laughs> Put me in, coach. And I just want you. Huh? 2021. Oh, 2021. And, and what, what was he scoring when he was, what was he doing? Yeah, okay, all right. We're here to uplift. No, no, I get it. We're here to tell you truth know, and facts. It was, it, was, it was a you know, I a, a, a value, value you know, point. All you want. They played eleven facts. games with the Blazers in 2020, 2021. Started one uh, in ten minutes. He was averaging. I'm a, I'm a round up. Say three points a game. Okay, so two rebounds. Okay, so <laughs> I, I just want it's two point five. You gotta I go up. To, I listen. I don't mean to just keep doing this, but I'm just gonna just, just keep doing. All right, this. so <laughs> he ain't been in the NBA since 2021 when he was in the NBA. He, he played 11 games. He played 11 games, right? <laughs> so we can say he wasn't... But his career, 9-6, and six, 
Okay, nine and six. In 22 right? minutes. Right? And he's the best player on his national team. It's Jordan. Hey, it's national. Going back. Are we going to circle not, not back to this not, not every time? The national, when <laughs> the, the country together, he's the best player in the country. <laughs> not from there. He's not from there. <laughs> oh. All right, y'all. <laughs> y'all keep thinking this world shit is that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Are you disrespecting the nation no, of just, Jordan? I'm just, listen, huh? I'm just saying. I'm just saying he's the, he's the best He's the best in the country. <laughs> and y'all think that you... Uh, I right. <laughs> Okay. Fair, okay. Fair points. <laughs> Keep trying it. <laughs> I know y'all try to globalize the game, but y'all got to be realistic. Absolutely. <laughs> all, all things aside, does Rondé Hollis Jefferson deserve another chance in the league? I think so. Thank Why you. not? Somebody answer shit. Why not? Well... Yeah. Hey, listen, man. Listen, I think he's making a very good case for the the Jordan. a whatever league is there, whatever pro league is there. He's gonna be the the best player. He's gonna be MVP <laughs> every year. What are we talking? Right, about? like if he wants to be the Kobe clone, that's not gonna happen in the NBA. No. So if he's okay with that, then great. But if he wants to be the Kobe clone, he's gonna stay. In Jordan. In Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, in Jordan. <laughs> so it's really more up to him, I think. Because I feel like if like he, he can wanted, go to somebody's training camp, right? Yeah, but... If it comes I'm to somebody, saying, yeah. I'm saying if it comes to So that's an opportunity. More than likely, that's the way it goes. Yeah. He's been playing overseas for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. He can get invited to somebody's training camp. Yeah, cool. Is that the opportunity that they speak of or somebody to actually sign him? Just an opportunity. So the opportunity is training camp. Yeah, yeah. Get, get on somebody's training camp roster. Okay, all right, I'm with it. Try and see if he can, he can make a, a comeback to the league. Okay, I'm with it. Mm -hmm. Because he's played in the league before, he has a chance shot because he knows what NBA life is like and all of that. I get it, but... He did go to Arizona, though, so there's definitely some Fair questions down. about academics Fair and <laughs> his yeah. basketball IQ. No, I'm fucking around. <laughs> but, uh... Oh, oh, oh. I'm with you. Y'all niggas didn't go to class. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that smoke, too, when we was in school, though. <laughs> y'all was that gentle... Man, yeah, 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 y'all the... Uh, <laughs> y'all the scared the shit out of us. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> But uh, so we talk about uh, Ronnie Hollis Jefferson became a naturalized citizen of Jordan. Mm -hmm. Brings on a next, another question. What are your thoughts on American players becoming naturalized cit citizens of other countries? Like we got Kyle Anderson. In China. I was Lee very Kyer. close to doing Lee that. Lee you said like Bruin legend. You I almost, were. I almost became Serbian. Okay. Very close. But they wanted me to miss my, pretty much the whole first half of my second season <coughs> in the league. So I had to choose and I had just gotten traded, and I knew I was going to play, finally, so I told them no. How does one become Serbian? You got to take a test? You got to hang out with Joker all day? Uh, I, don't, I don't know how much I can... Because like, I don't know if what we were doing was exactly legal, legal. Yeah, huh? but I was, I was playing in Hungary at the time, and if you have a passport, you can make more money overseas, you can go on better teams because you're not counted as one of the foreign players. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just flying to Serbia like a few times a month, meeting in like, the government buildings, I was getting an address, I was meeting with the team, the coach, I was just hanging out in Serbia. So, yeah, it's like, that's what they, that's what they do. It was, I don't know if it was legal, but it was a long process. And then we got to the end. And like, all right, we need you here from this date to this date. And it was like half the WNBA season. What, what did they need you out there doing? Just hanging out? Or Training camp. Because okay. the Serbian coach, she had left the Serbian national team and they had been losing so they brought her back so like this was like the like a big deal for them to like reemerge as like a powerhouse in, in Euro Cup or Euro, whatever they were playing in and she wanted me there the whole time and I was like no way like, was the bag sufficient I mean like was there any way they could have convinced you to stay out there um they could have but like I that was like when I made the decision like I wasn't trying to be like a career overseas player like at that moment was when I was like, I am interested in other doing other things, and WNBA is my priority, and that's what I chose. And okay. you know, now I'm doing stuff like this. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to do stuff like this if I was <laughs> hanging out in Serbia for you eight. You could do months. the Serbian version of Gil's ring. <laughs> they would hate me. <laughs> they would Jokic, hate that. Jokic, whatever it is. <laughs> Arina. Hey, because um, I know he's not Chinese, right? Kyle Anderson? Yeah. He, he probably, got, probably got some Chinese somewhere up there. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm pretty sure someone grand, grandparent. Is he the best player on that team? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, right? Like, you know, like, a guy who's ranked, like, 
probably 200, 250. Lee and, Kyer. Like 250, 300 in our NBA is the best player for the country. I mean, it just says a lot that all these teams are bringing American players to play on their national teams to compete with the United States, essentially. What's That's funny is if they, if they actually do a world game right now, right, and take the best foreigners, right? <laughs> Kyle Anderson, right? <laughs> he would make the team, right? <laughs> that Jordan kid, right? Hollis. Hollis, yeah, he would make it. You know, you got, right? That's, that's fucking an invasive <laughs> This damn... But he, said that as if, but he said that as if, like, the Olympics don't exist. And the, and the U, U.S. team doesn't win gold in the Olympics. I'm just oh, like... Yeah, I, I, it just, the, but I'm saying, like, uh, our worst players... Not our worst, but... Yeah, so some respect. Yeah, no, I'm just saying, our 300s, our 250s can go That's into, not any nice... And go you ain't even still in there. If you go into the ring, the 300 seats, you're still watching the but game. I'm saying, you... Ours can go into these countries and be the best player of the day. By a long time. Come on, it let's it come on. What do we you know what what are we arguing about? Right? It's 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 perception. The perception is the Euros has taken over the league. No, 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 no. Right? When you make them play by themselves and say stand on your own, right? It, it then it becomes hard. What's happening is you have general managers that are basketball. Savants now. So you have Calvin Booth, right? Who says, okay, I'm gonna take this Euro player and then I'm gonna build him, I'm gonna build a team around him. Okay, he can pass, he can do this, he can do that. All right, let me put this type of athlete with him, let me put this guard with him, let me put this. So it's no confliction on how it plays. So those guys are being surrounded by better talent that fits their game so they can be dominant. Versus us, we just want names. Yep. Come on over here. Like Jimmy Butler, right? If he was a Euro player, he would be considered one of the best players because of the talent around him. They built it for him versus someone that's sitting there and he just got a whole bunch of athletes and like, yo, this is not what I, this is not what I need. I mean, does the American style have anything to do with that? What? In terms of, are Euro players more fundamentally sound and understanding of the game and playing the fundamental side of it versus... No, they're the, old, they're the old white. <laughs> yeah, that's what they that's teach them cool. early. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what they start at. Like, yeah. you got to think, what we doing at the too. gym when you was 12? What was you doing at the gym at 12? What was you working on? N nothing. Yeah. No, nothing that they, no, no skill shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, that, that's what they hit a certain age, then it's, it's that. You know what I'm saying? Two foot, jump, stop, pivot. Yeah. Thumbs in. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, I mean, there's been talk about AAU, and people had a criticism. AAU still solid. We still producing the best players in the world. But does it need to shift to more? That's the thing. You got somebody like Luca who's going to that academy style, 14, 15 years old, playing against grown ass men. Like, I lived in Italy when I was a kid, even as like a seven, eight year old. We were playing in systems that were like the, the, yeah, the pro fine. team. In the, in that's fine early. Teach kids how to play the game the right way. I, I, I'm, all, yeah, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Yeah. Teach them how to play the game fundamentally the, the right way. Yes. But the, it's not going to translate to you, you going out there and you playing against a Ja Morant. Like, it's just, like you can jump stop and do all this fundamental shit you want. He's going to be right by you at the rim dunking on your goddamn head. <laughs> like, it's just you know what I'm saying. Like, you can do all the fundamental shit the right, the right way that you've been taught and you run up against him. And it's like, what they taught me ain't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not good enough. The, 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 what, what's going to end up happening is there's going to be a surge where the perception of Euros is taking over and then America is going to say, all right, this is what we're going to do now, right? We have the Jalen Greens and the John Mar We have the genetics. They don't. So all we're going to do is we're going to put in all these, these uh, establishments that can just give them fundamentals early. So now you have John Morant with Kobe's fundamentals. Yeah. Now you got a whole motherfucking problem because they can't jump the yeah. same way. They can't do the same thing. Like even Greek, right? Greek is from over there, but he's an athletic player. He plays like he's American, right? Versus someone like Joker who don't have the athleticism, right? So he has to learn the nuances and the, the spacing, the flooring, the angles and all that. So if you take our kids young before the athleticism kicks in and you say, all right, we're going to teach you the game itself. Now you're going to have a whole bunch of kids that have all the jumping ability and all that stuff with the mindset of how to play fundamental basketball, then there's no, there's no overseas. Because over, all overseas has is they're playing the right way. Yeah.
you know, they're playing the right way. Yeah, and they do. They do, yeah. Like, if I had to build a team right now, and they say, all right, you have the first pick. Pick one player. Mm-hmm. Now, I have to think about team aspect. I'm going to say, all right, give me Joker. Absolutely. <laughs> give me Joker first. But how come when, like, an American player, he plays the right way, it's kind of looked at like Try. he's not that good? Yeah. How come when they're just because they're European or white? It's, it's, yeah. they, that's, that's what it is. They're white. Unfortunately, that's what it is. They, they, they got to find their bird. Yeah. <laughs> they got to find their they bird. They play the right way, but you have a ton of guys and even girls that play the right I mean, that's kind of what I kind of struggled with was I was always playing the right way. And when I got to the league and stuff, it's like I was shooting. I'm a shooter, but it's like, oh, she's putting herself in a box because she's, mm. she's just shooting. But then I look at all the other shooters in the league who are white. They're just elite. They they just the elite shooters. But mm-hmm. there was never a conversation of putting themselves in a box. Mm-hmm. So I had to kind of expand my game a little bit to get out of this box that they they were trying to put me in. I was just doing what I was good at. I knew I was better at everybody else at shooting threes. So that's what I did. Mm-hmm. Isn't, that, isn't that a point? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how you keep your job. But <laughs> like I, it was like yeah. But those conversations are funny when playing the right way. How it's perceived how it's based skewed. on what you yeah. About. They're like Lonzo Ball, right? He's He's an American, but he plays like he's damn near European. Yeah. Right? He's going to make every right decision. He's not going to try anything outside of what he can do. Um, he's going to keep the ball moving. He's going to make sure everyone's involved. And Malcolm Brogdon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, if, <laughs> if Malcolm was right. playing this, get no more vanilla than that. He'd be all star. And they don't get no vanilla. And he <laughs> fundamentally sound, don't make no mistakes, don't <laughs> do the right thing every. I'm like, yeah. And it, yeah. It's, yeah. Trash, man. Let, let, tell them play one on one. See what happens. <laughs> see what happens to a European. We got to get the ones into the Olympics. Man. Ones that, that hey, there should be a one on one event in All Star Games. How come there isn't? You think they? Who is the best one on one player in the well, world? You think dudes are gonna want to do? We talked about what? Spencer Dinwiddie about that a little bit, but you think guys are gonna want to jeopardize getting clowned playing one on one and losing? So you're telling me that there's a pride? I, I, th- this is how cocky America is. If you tell me put 50 grand, because if you say open invite the one on one, you got damn near half the league, right? <laughs> half the league think they can win one on one. If you tell us, all right, put 50 grand in, the NBA a double that for the, the prize pool, or shit, everyone put 50 grand in, right, to enter, and the winner takes all, you will have 50 some players. Jimmy Butler gonna be in that motherfucker like, yeah, this mine's. <laughs> this is mine, <laughs> right? <laughs> He's never lost one on one. Kevin Durant, Booker, you're talking about dudes who that's what they do. They are. That's what makes them great in the playoffs. That's what makes them great at the end of the games. But they can't. There's nothing that lets them, you know, tap into that ability. Would it be make it take it? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Fuck you get the ball for. How many you dribbles? Stop. Three dribbles? Three dribbles. Three dribbles. Yeah. Three dribbles make it take it? The fuck you get the ball for? <laughs> Earn this. <laughs> yeah, I saw Paul George gym the other day. Dude was, it was, dude was guarding, but not really trying to guard him hard, but Paul a pro. Dude wasn't a pro. Paul didn't the ball one time. Not one. <laughs> like <laughs> nine for nine. <laughs> Listen, dog, not one dribble, man. Like, dude, all in his shit, he just get the mm-hmm. right over. I'm like, yo. So like, one-on-one you think is more about the shot making versus stopping somebody one-on-one. Yeah, one-on-one, it's, it's, it's mindset, get into a spot, mm-hmm. right, first step. Um, somebody who can create space. Who can generate? You, you won't get points for stops. Yeah, who can no. generate? Like who can generate offense mm-hmm. out of nothing, right? Mm-hmm. So when you talk about someone like Luca, give me. He looks like he's a one-on-one player because he's playing five on five and he isolates the guys and, and he's in his switch, dribble and, and he has his. <laughs> see, if he has the ball and you say check up three dribbles, and he, he can't do the move that he gets to do. Needs- right, that dribble stop right. Cross, yeah, step back, right? It, we can see that come. We can see that combo now, right? You get it, you dribble, two, and then step back, three. Ah, that shit works in the NBA game against a five man. That shit don't work one on one, right? I'm gonna Kawhi, jam you. You got fucking Kawhi Leonard out yep. this motherfucker with them goddamn mitts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, try that shit. <laughs> try that shit, you right? Want and he's not fast. <laughs> en- he's not fast enough, so he's gonna use all three dribbles every time, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you talking about like somebody like John Morant, one dribble. He's thinking one or two dribbles that he's gonna be sitting at the rim the whole time, 
right? Then you have someone like Kyrie, you have Booker, I'm going to go here, I can fit. Like this. I would like to see one-on-one. And all you know, the European name. That's because they didn't, they wasn't taught how to play one on one. They was taught how to play team basketball. Mm-hmm. So you open it up. I guarantee you, not none of them. The only person who's 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 cocky enough to enter that would probably be Embiid and um, Embiid and Greek. Greek be like, oh, shit, three jewels. <laughs> That's too too many. What? <laughs> 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 He'll do some shit like bounce well, and try to hit roll. Yeah. Like, I got that shit. <laughs> I don't need no moves here. <laughs> Every time. Stronger than y'all, bigger than y'all, more athletic than y'all. What's so funny is if you look at King of the Hill, if you look at any King of the Hill, it's never a skilled player. It's someone just playing bully basketball, yeah. bro. Just. Like, 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 go, go. If you Google it, it'd be the. <laughs> just, I mean, they had that one basketball play. league, and the thing is, those dudes get tired, right? It's like a boxing match, right? Yeah. So after a few back and forth, some dudes just burnt the fuck out. That's what it is. I'm just saying, then it's just do like, so efficient, man. Yeah, you big just, body. Give me three, just give me three, two, three dribbles. And then there'd be someone that's skilled that'd be like, nah, just two dribbles. Like somebody like Paul George, I don't need three. I, my oh, jab, I'm going to jab, jab the you fuck out of your hoes. Do what? You got you to gotta respect it. Yeah. Back you up, yeah. Put this shoulder in your chest, create this space. I'm 6'9", 6'10", mm-hmm. can't get to it. So let's talk a little, little bit about just Brandon Ingram, but more just FIBA in general. So Steve Kerr replaced Brandon Ingram with Josh Hart in the Team USA starting lineup. Ingram's been frustrated uh, with his role with the team. So can you play it in the World Cup? So I want to know, how does, how's playing in, in FIBA different than playing in the NBA? I played on three USA teams, um, college and two when I was in the league. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's an adjustment. Look, you're used to getting certain looks, certain touches, certain minutes, certain like rotations, all that. And if you not understanding like your position in this, no, 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 it's gonna be difficult, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And you don't check the ego at the door, if you ain't got no, it's gonna be real difficult. Or you can come into it the other way, not expecting much and, and become the best player there, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But when you have an expectation of touches, playing time, all this stuff. You're gonna hate it. You're gonna hate it, <laughs> 1,000%. Like that's why all them other dudes that's played before, the Kobe's, the I'm saying, D Wade, Mel, all them. They had to buy into a certain thing with that. You know what I'm saying, I'm not gonna get 25 shots here. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make the best of these 11. <laughs> and, if that. And, you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna make the best of these 10, 11 shots I get, and, and I'm gonna play D and I'm gonna play hard. When that's not your mentality, then to your point, that you're gonna struggle. Yeah, and you in a foreign country, like. You're somewhere you don't know. But I've never seen this much dialogue about like how a team is like interacting with each other for like a World Cup. Like usually everyone's like, Yay, World <laughs> Cup, like go USA. Like they're like making it like kind of weird. Because it's four non starters on the team. <laughs> Listen, it's, uh, it's the, the Villanova it's the, team. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, it's like it's the Villanova team. There's three of them in the starting line. So you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> come on, man. But it's weird, like the dialogue they're creating. Like Be- World Cup is supposed to be like, like, like you said, like it's fun. You're re- representing the United States. You got to buy into this team concept. But that's why not everybody goes and does it. Because one, he's the best player. He's the one of the best players compared to everyone else. Mm-hmm. So you're like, wait, <laughs> I'm all star. He played 25 games last year and started only one, and he comes off the bench, and you want me to come off the bench to him. Yeah. Right? It be, that's where it becomes the ego because you, just like Ant Man, when you look at the roster, you're like, what the? Are you drunk? Like, who am I? Who you want me to come off the bench yeah, to? Who you want me to play behind? But, but be, when I was there and I played, there's actually, there's actually a skill when, as a one, two, and three, right? You have to be able to shoot. You have to be able to slash and cut because it's more of college basketball style than it is NBA <coughs> style. Mm-hmm. So like someone like Melo, Melo is going to be the most efficient motherfucker in USA basketball <laughs> because he can shoot the ball and he can take one dribble, pull up, right? If you have um, Rip Hamilton, there you go, yeah. right? Those type of players, Clay Thompson, Clay Thompson just <laughs> dribble, shoot. I don't have to. There's no, there's no thought process. Get into the gap because I can zone. You can zone the group up. So if you're used to 
isolating, right, playing a one-on-one style. The, the USA right. basketball in for you. That's why it was weird for like someone like Trey Young. Like, huh? That's that's his style, right? Come out the pick, shoot, hit a gap, shoot. Like he's a quick shooter, yeah. which that's what you need for that style. You don't need one-on-one players. Right, it's right. a it's a horrible mixture. So like somebody like Brandon Ingram who needs to get to the post and get. Mm, nah, yeah. sorry, brother. That ain't. And even someone like um, Brunson. Mm, like the bully basketball style, I was just gonna zone yeah, you up. Yeah. But he's he's crafty enough to really understand what he's doing. He's because you play four years in college. College, yeah, yeah. So he's he's crafty yeah. crafty enough. But you know, it's one of those things where you need more catch and shoot guys. Probably need some speed. Like I would put Fox on the team, someone who can just change the pace because he can just get somewhere fast as hell. So it kind of really it'll throw it'll throw a, a zone off. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now you got you need guys who can just cut slash quick shoot and then they start questioning guys IQ and all yeah. kind of shit like it just it's just rabbit hole. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. just rabbit hole, man. Yeah. Like you got <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, it's, a, right. it's a rabbit hole. You know what I'm saying? Once 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 things said, then oh, then does he lie? Uh, like dude, you got it. <laughs> USA basketball shit tricky, and, and that's why it's all NBA coaches. Mm-hmm. And that shit tricky, bro. All NBA coaches That's judging you. Got Mark you out there. You're, because you're stuck. Because you're stuck in your style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you're stuck in your style and how your team plays, and that's all you know. So when you go into a system, even though it has plays, other than that, if you don't know how to play basketball, it hurts you. The only thing that helps you in USA basketball is if you have a great IQ of just playing basketball itself. Yeah, absolutely. Knowing no matter how these players are running, okay, I can cut here, slash here. Let me. I don't supposed to flash, but he's not flashing. Let me flash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Throw it this way. Understanding this guy's gonna help. I can bounce it this way. Like you have to have an IQ to actually play USA basketball. That's why someone yeah. like uh, Kyle Anderson can go over and be the best player because he's smart. Right? He plays for pop. He understands how to play the game of basketball. I mean, yeah, the like only college. expectation for Team USA is to win a gold medal. Yeah. 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 Like, like no one's going. Like it's not like a Rondé situation where you like potentially trying to earn a training camp invite or a contract. Mm-hmm. Like, these guys win a gold medal. Yep. Yeah. And if one of y'all are averaging 30 and y'all come home with a bronze, no one's going to yeah. care about that. Yeah. You got to come back with a gold medal. Yeah, like the team I made when I was in college, um, the World University team. Like, I thought they was bringing me as a filler. You know, they bring everybody in and they start making cuts. Because mm-hmm. at the time, like, guys had bigger names than I did, but ain't nobody been around me. Mm-hmm. But they don't know how I approach the game, my IQ, how I'm... So, Made the first cut, like, man, ain't bad. <laughs> Made the second cut, they like, mm. Then I go to Europe, and we go to Spain, and I lead that team in scoring and rebounding. And everybody like, well, hold on, man. <laughs> like, you actually can play and know how to, like, it was that, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, so now you got to be able to lock in and, and whatever the situation requires, be able to do it. Mm-hmm. Well, let's keep this thing moving. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Rondo. So during his career, Rajon Rondo's, well respected for his high basketball Q, being an extension of the head coach on the court. Uh, but during a recent interview with J.J. Redick, uh, Rondo broke down how he focuses on coaches more so than players. My mindset is thinking, how can I beat the coach? How can I outcoach the coach? I feel like I have the power and I'm involved in the game. So I have more of an influence and an impact that I can make versus a coach yelling from the sidelines, trying to communicate to his players what they need to do. But me as a player on the court, I'm able to make those adjustments and uh, you know, be ahead of the curve. I'm never going against the players. I'm looking at the coach and what he's saying. Everything, because everything obviously he's saying that you guys are going to do it implement so what he wants to do in practice. So if I can get ahead of those, those answers to the test earlier, I'll ace the test. And this crazy thing, we were in a bubble. This goes back to the bubble. Me and Brown were in the bubble watching the game. I think it was it was Miami and Boston again, and uh, we were sitting in the room watching the game. And like I said, it went down to the wire. So Brown's like. If we, if we get Miami, I got Spo, and if we get Boston, you got Brad. So that was kind of our mindset. It's like, it wasn't like, oh, we're going to beat the Heat or we're going to beat the Celtics. It was more so if we can out-coach or, you know, if we can out-coach or out-play the coaches on that staff in particular, which two guys we felt that we knew pretty good, we were going to win. So when you hear that, what are your thoughts on Rondo saying, focusing on out-coaching the coach versus... No, I mean, that's, that's, that's correct. You're trying to figure out because the coach has... <laughs> A coach is, most coaches is coaches from a blue sheet, right? So, you know, if you understand their sub pattern, you know, what leashes they have on certain guys, who has more of a green light versus someone that's, you're probably scared of because he has no limit, 
right? There's guys like the Jordan Poole, right, that have, you can't, you don't know how to guard this. So the coach guards him, right? So you got to try to get the coach to sub him out and put somebody else in, right? So there's, there's, there, it, it is a thing, right, trying to be smarter than the coach's playbook. Yeah, he coached. He fucking. Oh yeah, I'm. He, yeah, he, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm <laughs> Y'all coached. And we've talked about this before. <laughs> but. I'm with him. I'm a yeah, mad scientist out there, bitch, man. Like, I just I lock in, man. I'm locked in to plays, tendencies, um, cut. I, I'm 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 called again. You know what I'm saying? Like we played, and they had to change their whole scheme when they playing us. You know Cause I'm I know what they about to do, and I'm to hey, deny that pass. Don't let the ball go here. Drop there. Sk- um, bump him. I, I'm, I'm, I'm always that. You know what I'm saying? So I get around those things. But I never, for me, it was like more of game plan. Oh, well, well, shit, the coach put a game plan together. So I guess it's it, like it is that as well for me. And the way I guarded certain things to not let you run your set. So yeah, I was, I'm with him. Like, I mean, was that like it's a fancy way of him talking about like, no one the scouting report or like just doing the extra homework. Like how many of those types of players do you need on a team for it to be like a good thing and then like then you have too many of those types of players on a team? Like when does that become like now? What's so funny is think- that was just a fortunate thing where you had two players that did the same thing. Right. Right? Um because usually there's only one. Mm-hmm. Right? If you're fortunate to have two, you have a really good team. Um like, okay, so let's say um, Doc yeah, Rivers. Me and Jay Kidd. Yeah, yeah, you and Jay Kidd. So let's say like Doc Rivers, right? The way he had the lineup is if you know if you get out to a 10-0 run, like we're going to jump on them early, right? This is a solid team. Jump on them early, make them put in Lou Williams and Trez, right? So they can feel like they need more offense, which now if you put them two in, PG and Kawhi have trouble getting the ball because these two are friends. Right, these two are still trying to figure each other out. So look, try to get on them really early, really early, so he can make the sub early. So I'm waiting to the six minute mark. Mm-hmm. We're gonna make them try to sub in at the nine minute mark. Absolutely. Put that whole four in really, really early, which hurts the rest of the, the the quarter. So you know you have guys that like, all right, we're gonna foul. If I foul him, Doc is gonna foul our big man. Right, so we're gonna keep fouling their big man, get us, get so Doc can get us into the penalty. That I'm gonna play These one four flat. Games, man. So I'm gonna play one four flat basketball because they don't have a one four flat guy. Right now, I can get their drive and get into the free throw line. So there's things you're, you, you, you're, there's players that's watching coaches trying to figure out. Yeah, it's like a chess match, yeah. essentially. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. But you know, but coaches usually try to out coach the coach. But there's players that can see beyond you know, see beyond that. And I'm just trying to figure out how to manipulate to put certain players in. Mm -hmm. Like talk shit to the coach. Like, oh, he can't do nothing. Like I hear a coach say, yo, we have a foul to give, right? Hey ref, they have a foul to give. He's gonna try to foul me at the three second mark, or three three seconds left if I'm shooting a three. And all right, understand that ref, all right, four, three. And I'm going mm-hmm. because right. the coach just yelled out some dumb shit that he ain't supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they gonna yell out every time. Yeah, yell out stupid. Yell out every time. Cut. Every Same fucking time. Same yeah. time with like with somebody like Stan Van Gunny, right? You're, you're, they're down. They're down. They're up two. I know him. He's a freakazoid. First thing he gonna yell out is no threes. I'm gonna pump fake. Come step back at the three. Pump Knowing he just oh. told them no three. Crazy. Pump fake, because right. he gonna be so antsy not to give me the three, he gonna jump, jump and foul me and get three free throws. Absolutely. Right? So it's <laughs> you gotta know the coach too. Like, like know what type of coach you're coaching against. How long does it uh, take to get there? I mean, is it, is it film work? Is it just being, being familiar with these coaches now? Because a lot of times you see coaches change teams, but they'll still bring their same system to that new team. So if you've seen it enough. It's watching games, man, watching film. Mm-hmm. Like, you, like, you gotta watch games, man. You can watch as much film as you want, but if you ain't watching yeah, you games. you gotta watch it in real watch, time. You gotta watch it in real time. Like, you gotta watch it in real time in order to get the, the feel for it, know what guys are, okay, okay, okay they top block that play, what did he do? Okay, they guarded this, okay, how did he react? Now I know the next game we playing them, okay, I'm not gonna guard it that way, I'm gonna guard it this way. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna do this. Or I'm gonna put my hand on him. I'm forcing him into. Like, it's just, it's, it's all that little stuff. It's, it's a chess match, man. And if you're not doing it, everybody's not doing it. Mm-hmm. We try. Right. Everybody is not. It doing gives it. you nothing but an advantage. Mm-hmm. Like there's no downside to doing that. You might overthink sometimes, but like 
watching so much film and watching as many games as possible, like the only thing it can do is give you an advantage over your opponent. So we talk about players being extension of the coach on the court. Who's the best player coach that you've seen? Best player? Best player that was out there on the court. Probably J. Kidd. Uh, Steve Nash. I mean, it's going to be more of the point guard. Yeah. Um, that who's, I mean, you're going to have LeBron, Chris Paul, right? Yeah, yeah you're going to have uh, Rondo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so like yeah I said, it's going to be it's gonna be nice with it. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah. You know, John yeah, like, like, so you're going to have like, guys. Like, like Chauncey is. Yeah, Chauncey, big like shot. Chauncey yeah. like that. Like, Cha <laughs> game planning, Times like the whole feel for it, like, like big shot. Of, he, no one is a head coach. I'm saying J. Kidd, no one is a head coach. Mm -hmm. I'm saying so. Eventually, CP probably if he wants to take that route, because that's just the way they wired and yeah. yeah. And you see that with former players becoming head coaches, and we've seen the good and the bad of that. Absolutely. But it goes so much more into in what makes a good coach. We're gonna talk a lot about more in that in a second, but personalities. Just dealing with, you know, guys in the locker room, understanding the, the managerial side of it and everything else that comes with being a coach. It's not just X's and O's, obviously. Yeah, yeah and it's your personality as well. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's how you're never never play with Steve Nash, not to take nothing away from never mm -hmm. play with him. But just from afar. Just being on opposite sides of it. Mm hmm Never heard him chastise a teammate. Never heard him get into somebody's ass by not running back on D. Mm -hmm. Never heard him, and you're supposed to drop right, never, never heard it. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Ever. We played a lot of basketball <laughs> games against him. Never heard it. Now he becomes a head coach. It's not in you. Yeah. Either you had that or you don't. So, but take Big Shot on the other hand, me came out, you didn't fucking drop, dog. That's your fucking rotation. Mm -hmm. All right, I got you. You know what <laughs> yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Hold me accountable, me. You know what I'm saying? So I got to respect that. Now you're head coach. Same thing. J. Kidd getting somebody, same thing. I was mm -hmm. supposed to drop, he going to say it. But so now it's, it's that. It ain't just because you were a great point oh, guard or player. You got to have that internally yeah. as well in order to relay that message or the way you're trying to get guys to play. You have to be able to relate that and get the best out of guys. If not, they're going to run over you. Yep. And I, I mean, he's saying it in a way, you say somebody like J.K. who you respect, yeah. he's not doing it in a condescending way. He's telling you in a way, and I've no, you, nobody going to talk Holding me accountable. Okay. Yeah. No, you can talk, you holding me accountable. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm, if I know I didn't drop or I was supposed to do this or do that or I didn't wrote whatever, how can I, if unless I'm nuts and this narcissist, like, I'm gonna accept that. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying I'm not bigger than being told that I missed my rotation or I missed the open man or I didn't do. You know what I'm saying I fouled when we when we had no fouls. I'm not above report. You know I'm saying so I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. So I'm not above criticism in that moment. You know what I'm saying it's like in no moment, no matter who I am. And if you think you are, then you like, <laughs> the thing coming. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I remember uh, was it was um... at. Eric Musselman, right? So Eric Musselman came to me before practice once and said, hey, um, I'm going to get on you today for no reason, right? Like, I'm going to really ride you the whole day. So don't react, right? I know where this is going. Just, just, you know, just understand. All right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, whatever. So practice, you know, make a shot. Oh, you got to pass the ball. You didn't see your teammate open this and this and this. And they're like, I was getting ready to snap. <laughs> but I had thought about what he said. And then after practice, he, re he was like, you know, when you know, you, you're hearing teammates saying, why you just let the second year player do this and do that. And that? So I got to pretend <laughs> that I'm riding you to keep them in check. Right? And it was just, it was just trying to understand that he has to play the role with 
everyone to 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 get everyone to play a certain style because you know in practice motherfuckers start smiling like yeah motherfucker finally somebody says something a little sorry like, yeah. you know what I mean and you know as a coach you have to be able to understand everybody's personality to understand mm-hmm. how to talk to someone because you can you can talk to your toughest player and what ends up happening is if you embarrass him to the point where he has to defend himself that could be an ugly sight. So the situation with George and Denver, right? People think I just started out disliking this man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, no, you came to me, same situation, because mm-hmm. he couldn't talk to Melo. Mm-hmm. Was afraid to or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. super, so I must talk, I must vicarious through. At first, I was cool with it at first. Like, mm-hmm. all right, cool. You can do it for a little while. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, all right, cool. Enough, motherfucker. <laughs> Listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be yeah. somebody else, guy. No, no, go talk to them. No, no, no. Enough of this, man. Go talk to him. Mm-hmm. Superstar. He's shooting all the balls. Shooting mm-hmm. all... No, go talk to him. No, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. I, and I told him, I'm done being, I'm done being a scapegoat. Mm-hmm. So I'm straight up. I'm done. So from that moment <laughs> on, I guess he didn't understand I was yeah, done. He was there, yeah. <laughs> I guess he didn't understand the fact that I said I was done being a scapegoat. I'm done, bro. Go talk to that person. Mm-hmm. You can't talk to him. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Then yeah. that was the start of I. That's man. Then, I, nah, you got to talk to him. So I got him to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, you got to be able to lay that dog. So that's my question to you about J. Kidd. Is he mm-hmm. talking to everybody the same on the team, or does he know? Yes, absolutely. Okay, I was gonna say, absolutely. you know, Kenny can take it. No, yeah. I can't talk to this dude the same way because he's not mentally strong as Kenny. He's coming to everybody the same way and saw, get down or lay down. I, I saw him cuss Giannis out when I was with Milwaukee. Hey, bro, listen. <laughs> <laughs> He was obviously our best player, young, but he was supposed to be this. Mm-hmm. And talk to this man, I was, ooh, next person, ooh. Mm-hmm. Like, he had them boys around there walking yeah. eggshells, you know what I'm saying? It's the best player. I mean, yeah. you know, it's just like anything. You, you, you have to be able to have that relationship with the best player because everyone falls in line after that. So if the best player feels like he don't need to practice or he's lazy, it just trickles down. Yeah, yeah we're just going to keep, of course, they've been the one of the most successful franchises we know as of late, like the San Antonio Spurs. Mm-hmm. There's a game with us in Denver, and I'm pretty sure the first thing on the scouting report is don't let them run, fast break, right? Mm-hmm. First two points of the game, fast break layup, us. This man called timeout. Took all five out. Damn. All five. Y'all can talk crazy to them as they walking off the floor, in each one of them. <laughs> I'm saying? Yeah. He had a point to prove. Like, Tim wasn't above him toning the whole, he got th- three Hall of Famers on this team. Mm-hmm. That you treat them all the same. So that's what it is. In order to become that, you got to, to your point you said earlier, understanding guys' personalities, understanding what's making them tick, understand how they're doing today, understanding this. Un- like, ask, well, well, what's wrong with coming through as government? How your family doing today? You everything good? Mm-hmm. Been all right, man? Kids good? You ain't got no issues you need? It don't take much. Really? Right? To know your guys and know what ticks and, and all that, but when you have that, guys will do whatever for you. I'm saying mm-hmm. guys will play hard for you. And, and when you don't, then you get the other side of that. Guys give you their ass to kiss. I'm saying <laughs> absolutely. I'm saying like they don't. Like, <laughs> and I know after that's that that sub got them five came out. I guarantee you, Timmy was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, like that's where the self check comes in. Now all coach had to do is pull them out. Tim's sitting there like, hey, <laughs> I'm not going to be sitting on here all motherfuckers. Hey, get this shit together. Hey, coach, we ready. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then he said that, and he put that right back, back in. in. Yeah, we ready, coach. We yeah. got it. We, we good. Right, they made, he made an example. Yeah, you better get your guys together. Well, probably what he told you, but get your guys together. <laughs> Listen, hey, man. <laughs> Does John automatically, you know, we always talk about coaches that played in the league that had experience, but let's go to the other side. Coach, who didn't play at, at a high level. Did you automatically discredit them? Or what did they have to do to gain your, your trust and respect? Work. Mm-hmm. You know if they knew the game? Like, I, I just, like yeah, I have one, I have just a prime example to, to go on with, to your question is Lawrence Frank. When I was with the Nets, Lawrence ain't never played in the NBA, Lawrence ain't never played high level college basketball. He Work his shit. ass off. Work college. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, show there, late, early, always there. Game plan ready, he know guys' tendencies, what they can, can't do, what the team about to run, sets, defensively, offense, he know the, the whole gamut. So we was never not prepared. Huh? 
So somebody like that, who you're showing you that they can do the work, that they put the time in, can help but respect. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't think necessarily that you have to play in the NBA in order mm. to be good at this. So let's get into that. Uh, so Rashad Phillips, uh, better known as Yoda, dropped an interesting question on the timeline recently. He said, uh, beside every great coach, there's a great player. Beside every great player, there's a chance the coach isn't great. It's a weird dynamic. Does the player make the coach or does the coach make the player? He dropped an example. Was Phil Jackson a great coach or did he have great players? So we've got three <laughs> high-level players in here. Curious to hear your thoughts. Does the player make the coach or does the coach make the player? Me, the player makes the coach. The coach adjusts to put the player in better positions to score, right? Um, like score would be successful. Yeah. So, like, if you, you know, if, if, if you're a coach that you're trying to grab players and put them into your system, then you're not a great coach because you obviously... you can't adjust. Yeah, you can't adjust to the players you have. So, you know, it's one of those things is, let me see what you do. All right, okay, now I can draw these plays up for you, put you in this position. Okay, King likes to... King, like, you have to... It's a little bit of both. It's, it's allowing... The great coaches allowing the player to show you what he can do and then adjust from that um, is how I always looked at it. But, you know, it, it's, there's always, you know, someone like Phil who can, you know, run the same offense with two type of, <laughs> type of prospects, mm -hmm. right? That's two different. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's a hard question, but I do think it's the coach because I've seen coaches like destroy a player's confidence or how they play because they can't, adjust how to, this is a really talented player and the coach can't adjust to make this player successful and then like sometimes like then you're also losing on top of it so like why can't the coach adjust for this really talented player mm -hmm. but then on the other side like if you are brought into a, a system that doesn't necessarily fit your style like the player got to adjust sometimes I mean like you said it's like a two-way street but I mean it's, it's easier to get rid of one coach than a whole bunch of players so there's that too which we've seen a lot recently, just <laughs> giving some really good coaches the boot uh -huh. because they got some really great players that obviously it wasn't like working. Yeah, and no, I, I think it's both ways, man. I think it's both. You can have great talent and have a mediocre coach that that talent teaches him mm -hmm. what he has to become, you know what I'm saying? Or you have a situation, I just can go, this is my experiences. If I were to play for anybody else in college, I probably wouldn't have became who I was, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I, like Bob Huggins made me who I am, you know what I'm saying? I had certain attributes, but me playing for him allowed me to be me. If I were to play for somebody else, I couldn't have been who I was, you know what I'm saying? At all. Like, they would have kicked my ass out of school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Early. You know what I'm saying? Same so, shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. that's just what I look at. <laughs> it's funny, yeah, but, it goes, but yeah, different yeah, size, yeah. Yeah, I think it goes both ways. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I think you can benefit from having great players and you're a certain coach, and you can benefit from having a certain coach if you a certain kind of player. You know what I'm saying? I just think it goes both ways. Yeah. But this is a story of Kobe, right? Was it a year he had Rudy T? Right, he was what, 37? Right? Some, some stupid. Some stupid, right? Kill him. <laughs> he used to argue that he didn't get the ball in the positions that <laughs> Phil had him in. <laughs> but he didn't, want the, he didn't want the triangle. Yeah. Right, so there was there's this argument. I don't know if anybody remembers the Golden, it was, they were playing Golden State. Right, they're playing Golden State, Jason Richardson them, right? And he got Kobe bringing the ball up, right? Bringing the ball up. And Kobe's argument, did Mike have to bring the ball up? Mike had to come down, get in the spot. He was like, shit, I'm just trying to give you the ball early. <laughs> <laughs> right, so there was a, it was just a funny, it was just a funny thing. His best year, yeah. he didn't like the coach. He thought the coach <laughs> wasn't coaching him and just letting him do whatever, which was funny. Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, I mean, Michael Jordan didn't have to dribble the ball up when he got it. He just went into his position, gave him the ball, fed him the ball. It was like, so you want to run a triangle? No, I don't want to run a triangle. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it, it, it all depends, man. You, you, it's just one of those things, like, when you're judging coaches, just mm. 
positions they put you in, timeouts, right? Uh, do they know what they're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you like to go left, but you're right-handed, I expect you to know that, right? So if I challenge you into something, you better have that right answer, mm-hmm. right? Don't say some shit like, oh yeah, you know, we're gonna go under because he don't do this, and you're sitting there like, don't listen, don't, do not listen to what he said, man. We're gonna trap this dude. <laughs> We're gonna trap this dude. He obviously ain't. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've done, you know, oh. we had to do that before. Man, come out of timeout, man. Let's, he said some shit over here. And I come right out of the timeout, man. We ain't doing none of that shit. But we gonna, <laughs> we, as soon as he come off this pick and roll, we're gonna fucking trap him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as everybody on the same page, yeah, what are yeah. they gonna do? What, and if man? it works, they can't say yeah, nothing. They just to him. We came out of timeout, Kobe, I said, man, Kobe touching, I'm running at him. Yep. Like, what you mean? Get ready to rotate. I'm running at him. Yeah. Get ready to rotate. As long as everybody I said, on I'm the tired of watching page. this boy play one on one, man. I'm going to run at him. Y'all get ready to rotate. I'm going far corners. So mm-hmm. y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Go far, I'm going far corners. Yep. Yeah. I, oh, I like that. Can you, where did you come up with that? <laughs> Fuck, after the timeouts, which you didn't say nothing about <laughs> him keep torching us. Yeah. Fuck. Like. <laughs> so I know we're talking about NBA, but you talked about Bob Huggins and him being the ideal coach for you. You had Lute. Lute obviously wasn't a hard ass, seemed like more of an embracing and loving dude, but just from afar, watching his coaching style was a guy like you could really get behind. Older dude, but just like, you know, yeah, seemed he, like he was, he was... Listen, he adjusted to how I play. Like, we had two guards back, right? We had two guards back. Uh, like, if you don't go back, sir, I never went back, right? So I told, you know... Jason Gardner, look, I'm going for offensive rebound every time. That's what I do. I did it in high school. That's what I'm doing, right? All I'm doing is just go pick your man up. So I'll hit it, and then I just pick up the point guard. What the fuck, right? Mm-hmm. How stupid, how hard is that, right? <laughs> you want me to get back, and then you're going to yell, pick up the ball. Yeah. Well, I can't pick the ball up until everybody gets back in their position. I can't get back until Lauren Woods and Michael Wright are back there protecting. So you want me to get back and then and go then pick, go up, pick the up the ball. Like, no. I hate so, that. No. You know, just stupid, that's just stupid thinking, you know? So, hey, just get back, I'll pick up the ball, you find the two, and if we can switch back, we'll switch back. Yeah. Simple, right? And Coach. Ludo's is like, yeah, hey, it's working, let him do it. Work. It works. <laughs> Coach. Coaches you know, make things very complicated harder. sometimes yeah. for no reason. Yeah. But is that, is that a sign of a good coach, though, to be able to, that's, when you get the coach, you know, like, we've all played for coaches that you got to just do shit my way yeah, or my way. Or you could have had a coach, or Luke could have been like, nah, fuck that, oh, yeah. get back. Get back. Or sit on the bench. Or sit on the bench, one of the two. Okay. Could easily do it. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 some coaches do. But that's what you I'm, say in college I'm, a lot. I'm a freshman, I don't know nothing, ain't been here. He's won championships, right? So he don't have to do shit that I'm trying to do. But when he's watching it in real time, he's realizing, okay, my two, guard, my two guards have something going on. Why am I going to intervene? They Obviously, they done talked about it, right? Then you have Luke Walton, when he comes in, we had our own fucking playbook, right? So when Luke, when uh, Luke came in, they gonna give it to, high throw it, and then whatever happens, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't part of our like I didn't, I didn't even have plays like that. I just knew when you get the ball, I'm going back door. I'm a curl. I'm a flash. That's yeah. it. My man do, my man do one of these. I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> so if you actually look at my highlights in college. It's all backdoor cut slashes and shit like that. I was like, can this nigga dribble? I didn't need to. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Gil's Arena, so not to correct you, but uh, that Rudy T year, Kobe only averaged 27.6. I say oh. only. Only? Rudy, Rudy lasts 40, 43 games, citing mental and physical exhaustion. Oh, yeah, that was the, oh. So he only t- that was the year, so it was after Golden State. Yeah, since they want to correct some shit, it was after. I'm just making because the internet, you know, the yeah. internet likes to pack so when you up. Ever throw this up. Who's the coach then? Uh, was it? Was it? Was if, again. Yeah, oh, 35, 35 so more the, the, the Rudy T. They was after the Golden State. They had film, right? And Rudy T. Is mm-hmm. like emotional. Like I don't know what to do. Don't know how to give you the ball. This and this and this. <laughs> like really pouring his heart out in film. And they said Kobe walked down, put his hand on his. Head. It's all right. Uh, we're gonna let you go. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> all right, everybody, you know, go on the court. Um, Karan, you play. You know, you you be me. We're gonna run the offense and boom, boom, boom. But Phil, I mean, he was like, oh, but Rudy, yeah, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna still pay you though, but we're gonna have to let you go. We're gonna go in a different direction. It was like yeah. Kobe came down. He came down. Rudy, he was crying and stuff, and Kobe just walked down, fired that man. <laughs> it was like, oh shit. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, we're gonna say you have personal issues. You're gonna spend some time with your family and shit. So that's funny reading that shit. <laughs> Mental that and physical you exhaustion. Got, <laughs> you got PTSD. After yeah. 43 games. Oh. But unrelated to his past bout with bladder cancer. So, yeah, that's what I said. But fuck up. He said he walked down and said, yeah, man, we're gonna have to let you go. <laughs> just just yeah. say, man. But we talk about Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson, most chips in NBA history for a head coach. But he won those chips with some of the best players. But is it harder to get a team full of stars? to buy into a coaching philosophy and all those different egos you got to deal with on a squad? Mm -hmm. He he had one ego to deal with when he got to Chicago. And he had two egos to deal with when he got the motherfucking Lakers. He had a whole team of egos. (laughs) But got one main guy Mm -hmm. and then two guys. Easy to talk to them separately. It was so funny. To, to be honest, you're MJ Rob, I mean, I'm just saying, you no, dealing. No, 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 no. no. He, Mike, ain't, yeah, one, he ain't coaching. He one. ain't coaching. You got one guy. You got, <laughs> got one guy. That's my point, though. One. Go to Vegas. Now, what Vegas. I'm saying is, do what the fuck you want to do. Show up tomorrow. But the problem is, if you, if you, like, if you look at it, if you look at, like, uh, the last dance and stuff, are you coaching Michael? Or is his work ethic doing all this? Like, you're not really, mm-hmm. like, he's... First in everything, right? He he has that I want to be better than everyone else. So it's not yeah. like you actually are. You don't gotta coach him up. For yeah, him. you're not coaching him up for nothing. And he is the asshole on a team that's like challenging everybody. You just sitting back, putting everybody in position, right? Because obviously, when Michael was there, him and Scotty had a bumping. Scotty didn't want to. Whoa, whoa, who gonna get the last shot? No, we not. Like it was, it was one of those. Same thing when you have Kobe. Are you coaching Kobe or are you coaching Shaq? Because with Kobe, you're just saying, you want to be better than Michael Jordan? Well, this is what Michael did. Oh, shit, all right, you motherfucker, you. Yeah. All right, let me. <laughs> How many hours you say? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't, you know, I don't know. I would have to be there. You know, you have to be See there. See what the type of superstar. Because yeah. Oh, yeah. there's nothing worse than a superstar that you got to, like, pull energy out of, make them want to be there. Like, those are the hard egos and mm-hmm. hard superstars to deal with. Not the ones that want to, like, be the best on the court in the gym at all times. Yeah. I feel like those are the easiest ones to coach up. So yeah. we talk about Phil Jackson. Let's talk about Phil Jackson disciple Steve Kerr with that Warrior squad. Gil, to your point, you got Steph Curry. Yeah. Good dude, but winning drills. We had Iggy on the show talking about just the, the, the intensity, the effort, the energy that Steph pulls in. So do we, do we credit Steve Kerr for being a great coach, or do we credit that team for having great players? Okay, we're right here. Was Frank coaching you and Jason Kidd in practice? No, see, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's like the the if if and this is this goes out to like all hoopers out there. As a coach, you want your best player to be your hardest worker, right? Because if my best player is my hardest worker, everyone has to fall in line. I don't have to do shit. I don't have to force everyone to run line. If my best player is trying to be first. I don't, I don't have to, my job comes when my best player is sitting there, like, yo, come on, man, like, come on, like, you, like, they following you, you're, they're following your lead, but if my best player is like this, right. and that it's automatically here. puts everybody in check, man, oh, this is the shit he on, oh, all right, man, all right, let's get online, y'all, you know, it makes it, it makes it easier for a coach if my, if the best player is actually the person that actually cares the most, he's working the hardest, He's 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 making the law for everyone else, right. and I can just sit back, draw the plays up, right. like Steve Kerr, mm-hmm. and just chill. <laughs> hey, what's the score? Yeah, <laughs> you good? You good? All right. <laughs> you want to sub? You tired? Uh, time out. <laughs> right. <laughs> know, these you motherfuckers over there playing bottle throwing and shit. I ain't got time for this shit. Yeah. So in that situation, did the players make the coach? When you look at Steve Kerr and this Warriors dynasty, yeah, good. You come from good stock, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So I, I'm not going to say that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He come from good pedigree. His coaching tree, his playing career, playing under good coaches. Um, I ain't going to say that because he picked up some, some, some stuff along the way. So who's, and he, he inherited an organization that was striving for something. Mm-hmm. You know? So he didn't come into a situation where they were stagnant. Like they had something in place. He had good background and good good stock and it just worked. I'm saying it was a good it was a good parent, it was a good marriage. Yeah. So, it, it, so it to your point, I mean playing playing with Pop, playing with, with I mean just being around some of the greatest coaches ever. It's like 
when you hear like, <laughs> when you see the movies, okay, they gonna bring your daughter to marry your son, we royalty, mm -hmm. we gonna put them together, like it was that. Like mm -hmm. it was, oh, true. You know what I'm saying? it was hand-picked for what, and shit. Okay, now park like it though. I got an actual, yeah. I got an actual, <laughs> this could be a real topic if the, <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> right? Who is the best coaches in the NBA ever? Who's the top? Ever? Yeah, when we say ever. Like, you know, Phil Pop, right? If you want to no. give me your NBA coach, Mount Rushmore, who is your Phil NBA Pop, coach? Mount Rushmore. Pat, Pat, Pat right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. The best players on those teams was the hardest worker. Now, if I say who had the most talent, right, in coaches, Will Doc Rivers, when it comes to talent that he's coached, will he be top three of most talented? Mm -hmm. He will be to have the most talented players. To have on the his most team? talented oh, players sure. on his teams, he will be probably fucking probably one, two, or three. George Carl has some. Is he in the? Is he in that conversation? George Carl has some animals. <laughs> I'm saying, has he? Is he in that conversation as greatest coach ever? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. no. Okay. So. I don't think so. Mm. <laughs> Just saying so, you know. Where'd you put uh, Spo? Man, that's that was gonna be my next question for you. I think he's most a good talented. Coach. I think. I mean, I mean, coach. I mean, I mean, as a good. I don't know if he's on the Mount Rushmore, but. But well, let's break it down. There. So, so uh, been the NBA Finals six times the last fifteen years. Uh, since two thousand eight, the Heat have only missed the playoffs three times. Did it with the Heatles. Did it with the Skeetles. Whether he has mildew or barbecue, his teams perform. Yeah. Like, I'm just saying. No, as I said, like, because the best players he had on his team actually played hard. Yeah. Right? And that's what I said. So when you say talent, he's, he ain't top five in the most talented players that has walked. Ooh. No? Because he didn't have. Sh the, no, he didn't have the Shaq. Mm -hmm. the, he didn't have that group, right? So, you know, his best players is LeBron, D Wade, Bosch, Jimmy Butler. Mm. Right? Mm hmm. That's, uh, that's really about it, right? Yeah, you know. But even talking about, you know, the team you'll say, uh, suppose an assistant coach, you got Anthony Edwards just that's singing his praises, but just yeah, talking but it's, about... about the but it's hard to... When you got Pat Riley in the front office, mm -hmm. it's a culture thing, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So we gonna play hard no matter what fucking talent we have mm -hmm. on here. We gonna compete at a high level no matter what talent we gonna have over it. We gonna check this body fat no matter what talent we got over it. We gonna do these conditioning drills and tests no matter what talent we got over it. Mm -hmm. We gonna do this shit. And this is what it is. Yeah. And then when you get the talent to match that work okay. that we're doing, and to Gil's point, your best players are first in this, doing this, first one on the, the versa climb, or the first one doing all these things, so it's like, Everybody else like shit. Yeah, I got to do this it's even harder now. So we gon' and it just works. And then you got like a guy like Udonis Haslam, who's been a staple in all of this. Yeah. He just reiterates this year in. But how much credit does Spo deserve for, for oh, being able yeah. to, to keep that? Yeah. I'm just saying that whole time. Is there any point if he they? Does, he deserves credit absolutely. I'm not taking anything from him. But when you got this guy over your shoulder. Yeah. Pat Rod, right, right, it's just it's hard not to. Yeah, you know for what sure. But, and that's what I said when people talk about like. Coaching, right? You have to really understand, like, if this is what he's doing with this talent, he they understand this. Now imagine if he had that Clipper team Doc had. All right. Throw that Clipper team in Miami. Mm -mm -mm. Right? That's a whole fucking different team because mm -hmm. those boys are being lying. That's mm -hmm. what I said. Like, sometimes we we give certain coaches credit that really is underdeveloping and underplaying mm -hmm. what talent that they've had. Like, Absolutely. Doc had T-Mac too, didn't he? Mm -hmm. T-Mac, KG, <laughs> Ray Allen, oh, yeah, Paul man. Pierce. He just got one yeah, for all the talent that he's yeah. had. Like, Grant Hill, like, he's motherfucker. <laughs> he's probably had the best talent as a coach ever. Phil, you got, I mean, you got Jordan, you got Kobe, you got LeBron, you got Dennis Rodman, Pippen. Yeah, that's it. That's fucking it. Shaq, right? I man, I said Shaq. So you got about six players. Other than that, it's Robert Ory. Mm. <laughs> right? But you're talking about somebody who got. Fucking messy, nigga. <laughs> he's that's it, he's talking about the most top 75 players that ever play on the team. Yeah. But just to be real, when you talk about Ory and those clutch shots that he was able 
Yo, he changes the whole dynamic of that franchise without some of those shots. I get hit. it. Okay. But okay. you're going to say... He's going to pull oh, up I, on I, that. I, no, 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 I'm saying... But you're going to put him in the category with the... When we say best players... No, I'm saying best, coach. but... From he, was a glue, of, he was a great glue player. But in terms of playoff performances, being clutch. Great, great glue player. Right? Do you knock that? I'm just saying. No, we're talking so, about... I'm, uh, I'm talking let, about... Let me... Let's, 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 <laughs> oh, he made the shots. Did. Yes, he did. Yeah. They put him in the situation... Is that really clutch? I'm just asking. Uh, that's an honest question. He may, is that, or is clutch down the stretch, your team down 12? That's a fair question. And you score 14 in a row. <laughs> in a row. Like, or is that? We've had this, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. A, I'm just it's, asking. It's a form, it's, okay, so it's a form of being clutch, right? You still have to have the mental, um, no, he just took capability of taking the shot. He had the confidence. Just, the confidence. He had the confidence to take the shot. But it's no different than when Paxson took that shot. So the match, so if he, but, so at the same time. If he time, misses it. If no he misses, can. what the fuck is. Right. So is he clutch because he took it? But we talk about clutch. Is clutch just relegated to the fourth saying? quarter? Like, is that, is that some? Yeah. Yeah. Or if your team is down 15 in the second quarter and you do that, you rattle off 15, 17 yeah. straight. You're a, second, you're a second quarter player. Okay, I'm just <laughs> no, saying, no, yeah, But if you don't do that, then you're not going to win the game. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, so I mean, which one is form, it? Like, because you still got to, you know, like, we know some superstars that won't even take the shot. Yeah. Because they don't want to miss the shot. So, yeah. right, um... The fact that he made it year after year, series after series, you can put him in as a clutch shooter for who he was, for what he did. Yeah. Like okay. Derek Fisher was a clutch shooter. Okay. In in his, but it's not the same as like Michael Jordan with all the pressure. Because if he misses it, all the blame's on him. Yeah. If Horry missed a shot, no one's blaming. Yeah, Horry they're not. For the they're not. they're see, blaming see. the dude who passed it to him. Gotcha. Right. Like LeBron, yeah. right? You pass it to yeah. Darnell Marsh in the corner. Yeah. He misses it. What the why fuck is wrong with you? you? Yeah, why the hell you throw him the ball? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I get it. That's so my point. Yeah, so I get it. I'm just saying the, the ability with the confidence be able to step up in those moments, which, which are the highest pressure moments, nut cutting time, as they say. Yeah. And deliver. No, no, just the ability to year after year to do it. It's part of so, being <laughs> a type of clutch. Yeah, yes. I, yeah, I get it. I get but it. I'm just saying, like, but when we're talking about like. A coach having these greatness players like mm -hmm. Phil, you have five or six great players. And then from there, you had a team, right? You say, all right, Spo, you had what four, right? You know, um, Pop, you know, Sean Elliott, you know, David Robinson, David Robinson um, Mono. That even though even though some of them were second round players. You know, says the UCLA yeah, guy that's always shot that fucking Bruins. Yeah, yeah. You have about Jordan six Canada, or six or seven. Great Bruin. But when you're talking about Doc, you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. You're, that's you're, wild to think you about. The, you've technically, as a coach, had the best talent as a coach. You had the best talent ever as a coach. You got one. I mean, got one. But, you know, you're talking about you've had top 75, you had some of the greatest players on your team. And you have one championship, so we should be. There should be. We should be looking at that. Like, man, nah. are you a good coach? Nah. So when you got Embiid, mm -hmm. I mean, shit, Embiid, <laughs> oh. Harden, I, 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 fucking that shit, Embiid, Harden, just this Embiid, Harden, um, Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, and KG. That's five right that's there. Five, yeah. T Mac six, Grant Hill seven, right there. That's Seven. Then we won the Clippers. Like, yeah. I don't mean to pick, but goddamn. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so and they firing motherfuckers who, who ain't, who's on the Rockets. <laughs> if I'm a Rockets coach, I'm like, hey, hold on, man. Doc, keep getting the goddamn job, man. Look at this. <laughs> Please. Please. <laughs> oh, I throw that name out every time I'm trying to get job. Look, but look what he did. <laughs> what? <laughs> So when y'all look back on your career, who was the best coach you played for at any level and why? Whoever let me shoot the ball the most, goddamn. Let me just be honest with you. Whoever let me shoot the ball without my, any motherfucking penalties, right? that's my best best coach I ever had. My best coach was my my high school coach, my freshman year high school. He was like the first coach that actually believed that I could be a pro. Mm. And I was young, 14. Like, <coughs> he was the first person like outside of my family that was like, oh yeah, she can be a she can be a pro. She could be really good. And I only played for him for one year because then we moved, we moved from Florida to Atlanta. But like that one season I had with him, like changed everything for me, for sure. 
Bob. Bob. Easy? Yes. <laughs> Uh, who's the work now? Nah, <laughs> mine, mine was my, got, mine was my high school little. coach too, because he was the only one who said I'd be a pro. And then he put me a, he put a schedule like um, had to come in before school, nutrition, had to run my ass over there and do stuff for nutrition. Lunch time, I had to be in the gym working. After school, I mean, he taught me how to do a step back, the Jewish dude. He's like, I just watched this play. <laughs> right, I just watched this play, and it looked like a, a move you can do. So I'm sitting there with this little Jewish guy working on step back. This is how you do a coach. Yeah, that, that looks about right. <laughs> like, shit. I didn't know. And then from there, he was like giving me like all these tapes and stuff and have all this stuff recorded. And I'm just looking at the moves and going to working on them. Yeah. I know. I had all that. Y'all was amazing. Oh, yeah, and we had a shooting machine. Yeah, people tell y'all y'all was going to be a pro. Did we have a shooting machine? I didn't believe I mean, He started five freshmen. We had a varsity team with five freshmen starting. I know, I know that. Oh, the seniors were hot. Salty. Woo! <laughs> they bought in eventually. So I'm like, we still got to practice against that. y'all. But I remember my freshman year, they they called. I think they think they called us a Fab Five or something. Five freshmen starting, just running through everybody, like. Can't beat fun. that. And then last thing for y'all, who's a coach that you wish you got to play for? When you look back in the league, who was a coach that you admired just from the other side? How they handled their business? Pop. Easy. Don Staley. Ooh. I love Don. <coughs> yeah. She would have, I would have been, I, I had an opportunity to potentially transfer to South Carolina, but just the, their style of play didn't really fit mine, but just that was a long time. I mean, that was, what, seven years ago, eight years ago? The way she has grown as a coach, like, has been so fun to watch, so I would have loved to, like, be a part of her, her little legacy that she got going on for sure. Go you know about yourself. Not, whoever would have let you shoot the most. Like, <laughs> who? What? What? What coach did you wish you that you got the chance to play for? None. <laughs> coach list. None, because when I thought I didn't like my coach and we got another coach, that really, coach looked fuck better. Him. <laughs> give me that guy. Yeah, give me go. Just give me back my guy. Man. Fuck this. I don't, he already started off the conversation on. I think you should average about twenty two and shit. See, I don't even like this coach. Yeah. Twenty two. Coach Trip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> twenty two. Who averages? Two? I'm getting booed. We, we, we letting you go, but don't worry. You're gonna get all your money. I'm getting booed at twenty two. <laughs> Oh my lord! <laughs> what? Come on, you know what the baby goes say? Yeah, I don't think he made it. Yeah, no, I think yeah, I would have played for Pop, man. I could have, yeah. I guess me too. For some type of like, probably back then, it was more like the discipline. Lack of, because I didn't have no problem on the court. Mm -mm. I didn't have no problem away from the arena. (laughs) Right? Like you know, when I left the arena, me at home, like I didn't. I'm a hermit, so that wasn't the problem. Practicing the game wasn't a problem. It was that in between. <laughs> it was like, like, you know, I get there at like eight o'clock, and then ten thirty when everybody there, that's the problem. <laughs> ten thirty to eleven, I, I, I needed coaching there. <laughs> right, that's when I, I'm paintball shooting, water balloon fighting, because I already did my, I already did my job. Like you, you just got here. So let's, let's have some fun. I get to see my friends. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. We would have did something to you. Yeah, that's why I said that's, and that's where I got my ass. Not we. You. I would have did. That's why I said if I think about when I was a rookie, and I got all my ass whoopings by Chris Mills and all, 10, 30, 11. (laughs) Ass whooping. (laughs) Practice over with those 30 minutes. Ass whooping. Right? It's just every day. Like I, I got my ass whooped every day. (laughs) <laughs> to the point where it started to hurt. Like, the, the, the early is how, yeah, you weak. <laughs> like, they starting to lift weights to beat on me. <laughs> like, yeah, we go, we go do 10 sets of these. Tie, tie them up. Like, I had to go get the gun on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing this no more. Back up. <laughs> <laughs> and I should have been kicked out of the league, bro. Like, I don't even like, when, when I'm looking back at the shit I was doing, the locker room stuff I got in trouble for, that is actually amateur. Compared to this, my rookie year, my Gil, save it for the book or the Netflix Untold. My book gonna get banned. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Silver be like, no, 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 we good. Hey, nah, we this is not loud. You don't understand, man. Like, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm witch. All right, this is a- I, I, yeah, I think about some shit that had I, yeah. Not in the locker room, so to speak. My shit was outside the building. 
Outside the building. Outside the building. <laughs> All my shows outside the building. But I could, yeah, man. Some, yeah. This, some of this shit, yeah, I could only imagine, bro. But you, yeah, you, something's fucking wrong with you, dog. Yeah, I didn't. You, it was fun, man. Yeah, like, a, like, come on. Imagine, imagine going to the gym three times a day and it's just you, right? So I'm getting there at eight o'clock, right? Working all, working out by myself. Like, I'm by myself 99.9% .9 of my career. I'm training by myself, right? So when 10.30 comes, I'm, I'm already, I'm practicing. I'm getting ready for our second practice, right? And then your boys is coming in. What y'all been doing, bro? I've been here all day of day, man. My shit is... And it becomes this fun thing for me, not realizing, yo, they're trying to prepare for their practice, right? And it's like I'm fucking up their practice mm -hmm. and their routine because I'm in play mode because... I get to see my friends for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> it's goddamn boy in kindergarten. Yeah, that's what right, I'm saying. That's like what I'm saying. Like I got, got that tortured. Was recess I got, and playground. Yeah, I got tortured and... coming into the NBA, so shit. And that was fun too, because I wasn't playing, so this is where I get to burn my energy. I used to say shit, yeah. He blocked the fuck out you. <laughs> like Chris Mills, like with him in the Bonzi things. Oh, I got, listen, what he wanted to do to Bonzi, he just did that shit to me. Oh, yeah, 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 damn. How your throat? Yeah, Bonzi hit the fuck out of that throat, didn't he? <laughs> Get that ass I didn't. I had all this energy and didn't have nothing to do with it. Going home miserable, like, this is supposed to be the NBA. Was, where the friends, where the people yeah, at? Because that turned serious. Yeah, that's what I said, yeah. I got hit by a car. Uh, he hit me by a car. Yeah, I, my hip was fucked up for a while. He ran you over? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, because I was, yeah, I was, because when the, he played play too, too much. much. Think about it, like you, I got the toughest Yo. dude on the team, and he got hit, right? And he couldn't do nothing. <laughs> oh, that's leverage. <laughs> that you know what type of leverage that is for me? He drive, and I'm sitting there like, hey, when Bonzi hit you in the throat, <laughs> did it hurt? Like, hey, how, how did that feel? Like, if I did it right now to you, what you get? Like, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I didn't play that game. We did five game road trip. I'm on IR, man. I gotta go home and sit there, look at TV. Like I got too much energy and there's nothing to do with it. I need some physical. I need. I need. I need to be physical. I need to be handed. <laughs> I need the attention, man. A I was like, a, I was like, I was like a kid. I was like a fine girl in a club and nobody looked at me. Nah, 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 nah. Y'all, I'm, I'm gonna do something. You gonna do something? Yeah, I'm gonna do something. <laughs> Y'all gonna see I'm, me? Yeah, I'm gonna do something. Yo, I'm gonna do something. So I'm gonna have Yo. you. This boy <laughs> hit him with a car. <laughs> he hit me with a car, man. It, like, I was going to go behind, and I'm like, mm, nah. I'm going to go in front, because it's the garage, and then, cool. He, nope. Right into the garage. Boom. <laughs> then it the shit. <laughs> did it the garage and everything, man. Damn. Hey, man, I'm on IR, so it's not like I'm playing. So what, what is it? No, you really are. You have no idea how wild NBA players are. <laughs> no, like, no. like, wowed. Like, like just what what you can think of times uh -huh. we done 10. done it like the, times it by ten done did it done try like it's 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 real unhinged behavior. Oh yeah, I can tell you, yeah, absolutely. Like some of the shit that yeah, you think like what the fuck was you thinking? What was you <laughs> like? That's your that, that's your only thought that you could have in the moment when we tell you something shit. We like what the fuck? fuck was you thinking? My, the money like all the money in the world like it's. <laughs> Like, just don't. Like, trust me, there's like, <laughs> like there's shit that you just be like. We come into the locker room and we're like, you going to jail. You, what you did, like, you just jail, bro. Yeah. And I'm a witness. Yeah. Like, you going to jail. Hey, the shit y'all did, you three niggas right there, y'all going to jail. Yes, sir. And I can For like imagine <laughs> had, like the team he was on, like, especially like, okay, that goes that was, yeah. Bunch of nut hitting. Yeah. Yes. Then you go to watch. I can only imagine, bro. Deshaun. I could only fucking Nick. Got the, the Nick. Yeah, the, uh, I can only imagine, man. Andre Blotch. I could only <laughs> fucking imagine. That's the real story. No. Oh. Hey, man. I can only imagine, though. Because I, like, with the fun we was having, and you hear shit. Because like, the leagues, yeah. it, we all in different cities, but the league the fucking this big. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody knows somebody on the team, and somebody. No, some of the shit I used to hear about. The, listen, bro, I was like, yo, these, these, these <laughs> niggas is crazy. Crazy, man. Like, the you Knicks couldn't imagine. <laughs> niggas is crazy over there. <laughs> no, some of the shit. But the year before I got to Denver, I know where it all. 
<laughs> no fucking way, man. Like, you niggas smoking behind the team plane? Like, really? <laughs> but, it's a plane. It's a plane with fuel. <laughs> you niggas behind the team plane with a lighter. <laughs> a plane with fuel. <laughs> like, who? <laughs> behind the team plane, man. Like, like nobody's seeing them, though. That's like, that's yeah. so stupid. <laughs> No thought, like nah. if you, if you thought, thought. Do, if you thought men are stupid, <laughs> just give them money. The give, <laughs> hey, you think you're stupid? Give, give them some money. Give them some stupid. <laughs> the shit we do, just you, it's just yeah. no thought. You yeah. just be like, you're dumb. Yeah, absolutely. Like <laughs> you're an idiot. You're, yeah. you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And then you ain't got nobody around. You tell like at times you ain't got nobody around. You tell them, like that's not a good idea. No, like, no that's not okay. Yeah. Like that's that, don't fucking do that. What the fuck is wrong with you? Like, I, why would you? You ain't got nobody. Cause mm -hmm. Memphis. Yeah, yeah. We look at that. That's like it's prime example. Hey, that's, that's prime that's example. Normal. That's prime. That's, oh, that's, we was doing this shit with no camera phones. Yes. I'm saying, just imagine if there was social yeah. media and everybody had a phone back then when shit we was doing. Mm -hmm. You would, you would. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. If you just look at the behavior, mm -hmm. right? The reason that we. Look at him like, eh. Is y'all doing the same shit? I have it. You're recording. Now I want to touch it. Yeah. Something in my brain says, touch it now. <laughs> oh, <bet. laughs> Like, I'm serious. Like, think about you in a club, strip club, money everywhere. <laughs> By yourself. Yes. What's this the, the one thing you what? don't want to touch, right? I, I, yeah. What the fuck I need that for? What's nope. the Uh-uh. <laughs> Camera, come on. I'm about to do something stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to do something. That's what I said. It's like, camera, come on. I'm about to do something dumb. <laughs> So we some idiots, bro. I'm just thinking about all this. Just fucking, just watch bro. this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch we did a whole this. bunch of that shit. Watch, watch this. You ever hear? Hey, wait, Dad. Were, were you on the team where uh, AI was AI and uh, Ray Allen was playing tag? Uh uh. You didn't hear? Tag. Tag. Like chasing each other. Tag. You it. You ever heard that story? No. <laughs> playing tag. You it. USA Basketball, right? They're playing tag, you it. And Ray Allen got Iverson, tag, <laughs> right? Ran in his room, locked the door, right? Locked the door. They said Iverson went in his room on his balcony and jumped down to the <laughs> next balcony. <laughs> <laughs> Hung off. Like only a man would do that. No, we're, 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 Never. I would never think to do that. That's what I said. I'm like, I'm gonna get her. I'll get her tomorrow. Like what? <laughs> like so <laughs> fucking forty loop. <laughs> so just jump down, grab, to tag him to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Allen Iverson. <laughs> nah, hell no. The MVP jeopardizing his life on life. For, for a game of tag. 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 Like, you ain't gonna tag me. Like, ah, <laughs> in the balcony, got you right now. Like everybody's still weak. What? Hell no. Not the first floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely wasn't the first floor. We 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 definitely know that. So oh, that's that's what I said. It's <laughs> unhinged. Now let's Truly move on oh, to some unhinged fans with our last segment of the day, mostly Van. Oh shit. Presented by Underdog Fantasy. Mm -mm -mm. Download the app, use promo code Gills Arena. They will match your first deposit up to hundred dollars. Apparently people have been listening when I say this shit, Gil. And they like the fifty dollars that we're giving out. Oh shit. Shout out to Underdog Fantasy. Let's get that back. <laughs> All right, first question comes from Benny Benzino. This question's for Lexi. Should the WNBA allow girls from high school or any year in college to be drafted into the WNBA? Didn't they, they asked me the same question last time I was here. Did Might be they? the same person. And I said, really? no. Honestly, we, like, I don't know. I don't it remember. don't make sense now. They making all the money in college. Why would they skip college? All right, somebody getting cussed out in the back. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> you getting... Literally the exact same conversation. Somebody got to yeah. sacrifice himself for the show. It's all right. Hey, they fucking up in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Literally the exact same question. Oh, we get the soundboard for season two. Uh, it, this definitely. question they threw in a high school, which is super dumb. But... We all need a button with a phrase on it. Just hit it. Yeah. Are we gonna fuck around? Yeah, we all thing? yeah we all need if, a button with a phrase. If there's one rule that you can change mm -hmm. for the betterment of the game, what would it be? A rule? I would take the third round of the draft out. I would just make the draft two rounds. Two rounds. Yeah. Oh, y'all like the '80s? 
Y'all like the uh, seven, like we seven. We only have what? 12, seven, 12, seven picks. Rounds. 12 picks per round. I think the third Wait, round is. 12 two. picks? Per round. That's all we have. So 36 make, players? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so one of them did just make it two. I would make it two. Pick rounds. the same amount of players. But them third round same, picks. Yeah, you can pick the same amount of players, just make it two rounds. No, I would no, pick less players. Four players. Oh, you just want 24 players, so you don't want them to. Third round, if if more third round picks were making teams, then I would get it. But like it's every time a third round pick is waived, it's like a just all this outrage. Like the third round, you weren't getting, he wasn't making a team. Wait, anyway. first rounders got get waived too. Yeah, right? but most of the outrage this past year was about like second and third round picks. So you don't want guaranteed contracts. Or, no. We do have guaranteed contracts for the first There's round. Six, no, but you get your option picked up now in your rookie contract, which is new. But, I mean, I feel like if you're picking someone the first round, you got to give them at least one, one season. Yeah, one I think it should be guaranteed. Yeah. <sighs> Definitely guaranteed. should be. I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't guarantee it, like, officially, because then that, like, messes with your salary stuff. But you should like be like, like, you, should your, you should tell <laughs> like, your rookie, just like the NBA you know, are not 10. cutting you in this camp. Like, no matter how bad you do. I feel like that should be something that the conversations that should be had with first round picks. Yeah, I'm like if you if you if we had to <clears throat> if the rookies wasn't guaranteed in our league, all right? I, yeah, the way the January team. What I'm saying is like 80 percent of our Hall of Famers wouldn't have it would have been cut if they had to go off of their rookie performance. I would say that, <laughs> or giving us like one or two more roster spots. I think that the roster would change spots everything. Would be good. Ro- more roster spots without the third the round. Third round. Yeah. So two more roster spots, third round, get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. Guys. Makes sense. Man. Yeah. All right. Next question is from underdog user named Chinburger. I don't know wow. if you're trying to take a shot at me, but it's all good. <laughs> when watching or dissecting the NBA or any basketball game, what is it that you're looking at that the casual fan might not pick up? Pick up on. What am I looking at? Um like like if for the shooting guards, or I just run all the way to the corner. Like I, I, it seemed like they don't even run through no more. Like back when we we had to run under clap and hands and shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they don't do that no more. You know, so it's like, you know, watch. You're right. I used to have to do that. <laughs> yeah, don't get out and no go. More. So it's like, you know, are the you know are the guards getting out and going? Are the um, the bigs running down the lane? It's like how fast are everyone running? Like the spacing. Um, are they playing through the offense or natural behavior? Um, you know, I'm just watching. I don't. It's like I don't watch the game. It's I don't watch the game to enjoy it. It's like I'm watching like it from an editor stuff. point, and it's like even with movies, huh? Like I hate. Like people hate watching TV with me. Like I'm watching this 90 day thing. This and I'm like looking at the, the watch. You know, looking at the socks. Like I'm just looking. I look at <laughs> stupid shit. All right, when I'm playing, like it's. Pointless for me. Um, what do I watch? I mean, I watch more to learn. So, like, I really tune in for and watch players that I feel like I've kind of played similar to. So, just seeing how they get open, how they get to their spots, where they're getting the ball, things like that. Like, if there's a game on and there's like, I feel like there's nothing I can learn, which is very rare, then I probably won't watch that game. But I'm always, you know, trying to be a sponge every time I'm, I'm watching basketball. Yeah, me is watching the action, like the. Average fan is they taught to watch the ball. Mm-hmm. Like in sport, they watch the ball. I'm watching everything, but the, I see everything but the ball. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I see everything he cut here, he did this. Even though I watch football, but I, I see like all the little things and people are like, how you see that? Like I'm watching NFL games with a former NFL linebacker. Like, and I'm calling out like, and why he blocking that way? Why he like? What sport did you play again? Because yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just watching the action and I'm seeing it all. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm programmed just to watch the action and even to this day, it's like t- to your point, yeah. it's hard to watch a game with me. Yeah. <laughs> like I watch a lot of basketball by myself. Yeah. It's like because I'm constantly. Man, why the fuck you make that pass? Yeah. Why the fuck you make that pass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The entire like, what? time. Like, oh, so Dumbass. 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 Dumb
watching film like with KJ. Like, like no, nah, after the game, I don't need to watch film because I'm. Right. I didn't broke it down every play in my head. No, so after the game, I'm like, yo, why was this? How da, 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 da. So, so, but yeah, for me, I, y'all watch the action. Okay. So we got two more questions for you. Ho- hopefully we get through these quickly. We all got shit to do, Gil. So and it's almost basically early. just shut the fuck up then. Yeah. Is that how you talk to <laughs> No, I'm just saying that's what you're basically saying. Ooh, ooh. Hopefully we can get through these quickly. <laughs> yeah, you ain't the only one, you ain't the only one with heat. Short enough answers are okay. You ain't the only one who can roll up with heat, okay? <laughs> and I know where you're safe at. I don't know how much time it'll take you to get there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question is from uh, Ballhead Lil Will. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that's that's one of my favorite uh, underdog users. That's a good one. Which Kobe will beat the other, 8 or 24? Ooh. Mm. That's a very interesting question. I'm going with 8. eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I'm going eight. with 8. Yeah. Close, yeah. or is 8 bust yeah. 24 is that, or is it, is it going to be a good matchup? He was like, yeah, he was, was ruthless. Yes, yeah, he was. Different. <laughs> he was really eating. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was ruthless. Hey, Kobe is different. Okay. Yeah, he was a. Yeah, he was an untrained Mamba. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> he was. He was an untrained. Too much venom. <laughs> yeah, boy, yeah, well, he yeah. was just. He's just that's, but that small one that just all the venom every time he bites. Yeah. Ain't no, I'm saying like, yeah, yeah. yeah that one, because that's the one that came up with Bamba, right? Is that, <laughs> yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> and last question uh, is from Just Ballin' Smooth. When Gil hits the blunt tomorrow, who's going to calm him down? This shit here. Bro. None of us. You see how, see how he talked to me? We're going to let Gil fucking be in Debo's chicken coop. Shower. Sweat like a slave. We're going to let a shower calm him down. That's what I gotta expect. Like, what's going on, man? Hey, come on. Angel does, ho! <laughs> see, the thing is, see, see, I, see, I'm, see, I'm finna be, I'm finna be Team Gill right now. Thank you. Right? They didn't say how many times you had to hit it. They said you had to hit it, right? You had to smoke, right? Yeah, this is, yeah. this is all. This is not productive. Oh, okay? oh he gonna get high. <laughs> it might take him. A, just hit it one time. Gil. He ain't never smoked. Just I know. Hit. Like, so, so trust like, me, hey. Damn, but we live in listen. We live in the land of it. Yeah, there's abundance of it here. He will have a toke of something that's gonna be sufficient. What if we send your life just on a downward spiral? I, I know. That's you know, what I'm saying. Look, you the freeway underpass on Winneka. I'm popping it. I'm popping it for you. another hit. I said, I hope I die. Just now, everybody got to feel sorry. Yep. Fifteen thousand people. Y'all did. Y'all did this. <laughs> No, it's hard to my kids. <laughs> hey, you can't renege on the bet, dog. I know, man. Can't Trust renege, me, man. dog. I, I'm sitting there thinking I, I stopped. I, I was going by the weed store. I was like, ugh. <laughs> There's one you right here. Pull up to it's Elevate. Like, and tell, you tell them I sent you. They who? get the $5. $5 elevate right here on Ventura Boulevard. Oh, okay. He cook is not too far. Like, yeah, you like, gotta, like, uh, wait, wait. Can I just like we just go into like the uh, sauna and then y'all smoking and then I'm in there? It's not the same out? thing. Yeah, that's not what that's you worse, want, right? Yeah, that's not what you no, want. No, it's not no. the same thing. What happened to the hot box part of it? <laughs> that's not what you want. Oh, that's worse. Oh, that's a, worse. A car, a sauna ain't gonna do nothing. It's just gonna have your sauna smelling like dope. That's that's not. Hot boxing in the car and not thinking that shit's not gonna stink for three days. Yeah, no, nah, we just it, it'll be alright, dog. It's temporary. See, the thing is that you got to know is it, it, it ain't going to last forever. Okay, well, well, <clears throat> it ain't going to last Which forever. one is the sleepy one? We're going to bring you a sativa. I no, 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 no. So you want Indica? Indica, 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 indica in the bed. Paranormal. So you want so uh, Indica in the, in the couch? In the bed, in the couch. Okay, I want that one. So you want, so you want an Indica. So you want something yeah. that's going to... So you're going to take your nap. So anyway. it's going to help with your nap. Like I told him yesterday, it's going to help with your nap. The other one, if you, it might make you paranoid. I'm gonna bring. Yeah, it's, it's a potential. Both of them could. If, if, if you have a toast crunch, if you have a paranoid personality already, it just, yeah, just it, it might it enhance that. Yikes! You're not might paranoid anymore. You. Huh? You're not paranoid out. anymore. You stay in the house. The reason you're a hermit. That's the best part, though. You don't gotta leave. You don't gotta go out. Think somebody's always chasing me. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. I'm gonna come back a couple. Nah, you got guns. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come back a couple. And that's the problem. I'm gonna be high. Y'all gonna go, and I gotta be here by myself. I hang out with you. Now I gotta deal with myself by myself. I hang out with you. Come back in with the screen mask. Come back in with the screen mask. I hang out with you for a couple hours. If I come back, all the glass broke. That means I was just running into shit. Thought people was chasing me. (laughs) (laughs) Back up, nigga. (laughs) Pow, (laughs) pow, (laughs) pow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Lexi, we appreciate you pulling up. We're gonna get you back soon. 
Kenya, appreciate you as always. Gil, appreciate you. Appreciate y'all. We got one more show this season. We're turning up tomorrow. Ooh. It's going to be a function. Make sure you get there early. Don't meet us there. Beat us there. Appreciate you, Underdog Fantasy. Gil's Arena, we will see y'all tomorrow. Smoke down. Oh. All the liquor. Look, with the honor call for greatness, the chosen a few that carry the gift of genius. Who do what they do? Who possess finesse the blessed with desire is true? I'ma say it loud, none other than who? Some swear by Nikes, others love Adidas. Rappers be rocking crowds, I'd rather rock.